Okay, guys, so we are live. Uh, so for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I'll be your friendly chronicler of the media today, because today we are carrying on with our adventure playing uh, Mongoose Entertainment's outstanding Conan, the role-playing game. And uh, we are playing an adventure that we've been calling A Princess of Shem. This is part five of that. Uh, if this is your first time joining us with this uh, particular adventure, you can find a playlist of all the previous adventures, uh, previous sessions on this. Feel free to uh, get caught up with those and then come back to us. If you don't need to do that, or if you are just carrying on from a previous uh, session, well, then welcome back to the Hyborian world. Uh, allow me to introduce you to the stars of today's session. I'll go the order that I got you guys on the screen here. Why don't you tell us who you are and who are you playing today? First up, we've got our resident armor smith, Dave. Hey, everybody. I'm Dave. I'm playing Hack on Doom Winter, who is a uh, S-tier barbarian level three, border level two, all around great guy and ass kicker. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, next up is Jamie. Hey everybody, I'm Jamie, and I, I, I can vouch for Dave uh, that he is uh, running an all-around ass kicker. Uh, I'm playing, though, however, Sir Isidore, who is a more of a professional knight, a noble soldier of sorts, and um, looking forward to getting back into Akbatana today. Very nice. Uh, I will confirm that Sir Isidore has also got a pension for the mysticals. Mm. That is true. Yeah. And yeah. speaking of penchant for the mystical, last but certainly not least, it's George. Just slightly a penchant for the mystical. Mm -hmm. I am playing Olina Krokin, who is a level five Zamorian scholar, aka a wise woman. Mm. Uh, so we I feel like the three of us have like a very complimentary group of uh, adventurers. So we shall see how this plays out as we go along. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And before we get into our session, guys, we are starting our Conan uh, session the way we start all of our Conan sessions, which is an invocation of the Nemedian Chronicles. So, no, O Prince, that between the years when the oceans drank Atlantis and the gleaming cities and the years of the rise of the sons of Arius, there was an age undreamed of when shining kingdoms lay spread across the world like blue mantles beneath the stars. Nemedia, Ophir, Brithunia, Hyperborea, Zamora with its dark-haired women and towers of spider-haunted mystery, Zingara with its chivalry, Koth that bordered on the pastoral lands of Shem, Stygia with its shadow-guarded tombs, Hyrcania, whose riders wore steel and silk and gold. But the proudest kingdom of the world was Aquilonia, reigning supreme in the dreaming west. Hither came Conan, the Cimmerian, black-haired, sullen-eyed, sword in hand, a thief, a reaver, a slayer with gigantic melancholies and gigantic mirth, to tread the jeweled thrones of the earth under his sandaled feet. And that never gets old for me. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoy reading that at the start of every one of our sessions. So, Couldn't agree more. Uh, where our heroes are currently located, I believe, guys, is in said pastoral land of Shem. And what has brought our heroes to today's session thus far? Whew. Lots. Well, <laughs> Dave, you can start. Because um, I, my, my starting point is personal. Okay. Which is that I'm seeking revenge against a foul wizard by the name of Tot Aman, who yes. slaughtered Stingy and exile. my... Yes, yes. Dark magic. Um, he slaughtered my family, my adopted family, in fact, um, which was this cabal of, um, of wise women sorcerers who taught me everything I know. Um, Anybody else have something else before that we get to the, <laughs> what happened in the actual like 
context of the adventure. I could just mention that Sir Isidore and Hacken have been, uh, they've been, let's say, uh, uh, trying to leave the north and head south um, away from uh, old, old, you know, old uh, friends and old places and find new ones. And uh, along the road, we ran into this merchant whose caravan had been overtaken and we were able to help him uh and and uh, eventually make our way to aquitana where he plugged us in and connected us with some of the inner workings of the city and where we learned about tutaman uh of, of amongst other things yeah and the the way of learning i'll just give you a couple more scenes of aquitana anna says she loves aquitana anna loves aquitana there's Ooh, some of that while we were at Those are great images. his house, the yeah. fantastic merchant and his lovely wife. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, do we have their picture? We have their pictures. I think. Do. It's uh, Gabal and Jamila. Uh, I'm going to ask on the behalf of like the viewers, Kevin, where did you find these amazing uh, some from from Conan With products, some from some other gaming products. Mm, uh, just okay. yeah, it's so evocative of like the landscapes as described by Robert E. Howard. We've been so, really okay. blessed with a bunch of uh, more in the last like ten years. There's been a lot more Bronze Age or expressly swords and sorcery products that have come out with some really fucking great art in it. So yeah, we can get that. In particular, like uh, badass looking uh, Semitic uh, heroes between Jackals and uh, Degenesis. There's some fucking amazing stuff mm. that could be repurposed for. Because Shem is kind of a quasi, you know, Israel uh, kind of yep. area. So, yeah. Yep, the bots in general. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Okay. So, Sorry. Dave, you were right. saying? Yeah, while we were at their house, after we had spent our first night uh, relaxing and carousing, um, Hakon had experienced a very strange dream. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a dream that took him back to a place where his brother had been laid to rest, that he hadn't thought of much uh, in the past uh, recently, and there was flowers on the hillside uh, that only exist in the north. and. Um, he saw a girl on that hill um, who turned out to be Aira, the blonde in the uh, green hood there, a good green cloak. Um, and when he woke up in the morning, he had petals from those flowers in his hand. And he couldn't understand that because he hasn't been there for years. Um, later that afternoon, we saw Aira um, running through the marketplace and he immediately recognized her as the girl from his dream and she was being chased by a bunch of thugs, uh, armored thugs, uh, turned out to be Tutamon's guards uh, who were trying to accost her. Well, Hakon and Sir Isidore do what they do best. They take care of those thugs pretty, pretty well. Mm -hmm. A couple of them got away um, and then we ended up fighting some of his higher, uh, higher level cronies, heavily, more heavily armored. Um, we got Aira back to uh, Gabal's place and learned that she is has escaped Tutamon and she was one of 12 children of Bori who had been captured and used in the um, I guess I don't binding. Know it's, I think it's the binding. binding. Yeah, it's kind of a binding ritual of yes. a very powerful entity an Acheronian entity. An Acheronian yep. sorceress. Meshkahema. Meshkahema. So uh, we tried to shield her. It wasn't possible. We decided to try and um, break into Tutaman's place and um, see if there was a way we could uh, disconnect uh, Aira from whatever was going on. Um, had to fight a giant crocodile, which Kevin alluded to twice in that session. <laughs> um, uh, we got in to speak to Mes Meshkahema, and she turned the tables on us a little bit, made it seem like she was a prisoner and that she needed to be released, and I was doing a good job trying to trick us. 
Um, There's two demons, Ziggurat. Yeah, two demons showed up, and we carefully were hiding in the shadows and listened to him mm. discussing with Meshkahema. Um, and then him and his men assaulted Gabal's place, and we had to booker from Tutamon's uh, place to Gabal's and fought our way through Gabal's house to their the room where they were at. Yep. Um, Canal jumping they, camels and all. Yeah, doing race on racing camels. That was yep. pretty awesome. <laughs> and um, we kind of made a mess of most of the house. There's a lot of dead Tutamon cards and such. <laughs> uh, and we got pretty hacked up. Uh, and then in the chamber where Cabal and uh, his wife and Aira were, um, we faced off against not Tutamon, but somebody else of power, if I well, she, what you found is that Aira, um, you may remember that Aira had unleashed something that had uh, slaughtered several of uh, Tutamon's attackers. And they were concerned about um, not only the uh, threat of Tutamon coming again, but also uh, her. And that's when I think Oleana uh, had introduced her herself because yes. she had been looking or watching Tutamon's place and suddenly saw these two wild northerners come riding out. You know, uh, clearly, though they were wearing uh, Tutamon's armor, that uh, Norseman uh, that uh, was certainly was not someone who was hired by Tutamon. And uh, she followed you guys to here, and that's when she introduced herself. And uh, it was last session. What you might be thinking of, Dave, is this lovely creature yes. which was the black oh. ape yes that was sent to attack us yes and then we, but we had also to... some kind of either interaction with or knowledge of king lamech king lamech um, i think is the king of uh, the Akatana? city state of shem or uh, Akatana, the city shem is the the, the region the city right yeah these are yeah, yeah, city yeah, states yeah. so yeah, so we I can't had, uh, we actually interacted with him or not. No. One of you guys, one of you yeah. two, I'm maybe Oleana had done some kind of a scrying, and we learned that there was a second way into Tutamon's place where his yep. um, spies, spy network would typically use instead of going through the main entrances to the palace. And so we had made an attack on, or gone through that place, and I think that's where we got attacked by the ape creature, isn't it? Ah. Uh... I think the ape came to you guys. Yeah, that's what I have. Yeah. Yeah, I think you guys were planning on doing, making that attack, but the uh, you realize that this thing had come here. That's oh, why right. Hacken is it, most it recently... on the balcony. Exactly. It seems to, to move. Yeah. Yeah. And now that it's you guys have successfully defeated it, I can tell you, you know, one of the... Uh, Anyone who says that, uh, you know, bog standard um, Lovecraftian monsters are, uh, you know, old hat, uh, that, that's a dimensional shambler, guys, uh, that you face. <laughs> so just got a little bit of reskinning on them and you can make them just like new. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's pretty awesome. And like in keeping with the Ari e. Howard uh, mentality of uh, what makes something scary. Totally. Because um, yeah. he obviously was super into the Lovecraft stuff as they were at least pen pals, as we know. Yeah. Uh, but with a very different like way of coming at the totally. same mythos, yeah. intellectual versus like action emotional. Absolutely. And this was definitely action emotional. Well, and <laughs> Lovecraft monsters break your brain. Uh, Howard's monsters, yes. you can punch him in the face. <laughs> so that's right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> so thank, thank, thankfully, yeah, <laughs> which you guys did to this thing. So, we did, yeah, yes. So, that's I think where we pick up. Is there anything I'm uh missing or we're missing from our that's, summary? That is the last thing that I have in my notes is defeating the black ape, okay. Then, I mean, we know that, me uh, my mesh, mesh. Mesh Mesh Kahema. Is, is, is an ancient name. Yeah, it's an Acheronian name, and uh, yeah. it appears to be a um, buxom princess, but 
something tells you that you don't need to bind uh, with the blood of, uh, you know, a dozen children, a ghost yes. of an Acheronian princess. Yes. So we know there's a lot, there's more to her story. Uh, or she's more powerful than she might seem if you would encounter her. I would say there's more than meets the eye, but we don't want to... No, Transformers reference. Did I, get, yeah, did I give her away that she's a Transformer? Uh oh. <laughs> Show her some version. Sh- <laughs> if that was the next Transformers movie, I'd actually watch that one. Howardian Decepticon? <laughs> Howardian Decepticon, okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god. Sure. And then punch yeah. it in the face. Uh, That's the, <laughs> so. One thing that we didn't talk about last time that I think Oleana mm-hmm. might be able... I mean, both Sir Isidore and Oleana would be able to provide some insight um, on is the prioritizing of your targets, I guess, or what you want as your outcome. Because one of the things to bear in mind is that there are certain rules that govern sorcery in uh, the Hyborian world. And uh, let me just get the name of it. One of those rules is the rule of... The rule of impermanence. Some effects of sorcery are bound to the lifespan of the sorcerer. So there can be other things that shorten that lifespan of things, or and this is workings of uh, of a cult right, not like crafting a magic item. Although you can create magic items by doing that as well. But if certain things are bound to the uh, soul or the lifespan, not the soul, the lifespan of the uh, sorcerer, if your intent is to slay Tutamon, then that may unwork whatever magics he has been maintaining or that are linked to his lifespan. Right. Such as holding the uh, Acheronian demon in place. That is the kind of thing that you would need to tap into your life force in order to do. Like it is sort of a, um, literally in some cases, a devil's bargain where you need to uh, in order to work that kind of very potent magic, particularly against uh, f- uh, powerful or potent uh, adversaries or, or unnatural things from the outer dark, you need you know, to make use of the resources you have at hand, which is your lifespan and your soul. So yeah. that is something I'm not sure that we talked That's about good. last time. <laughs> so I thought I'd underscore I that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you did mention no. some kind of a, a con- contest of yeah sorcerer, the war of souls quilt. yeah that sorcerers can do is one of the ways to keep them occupied is sorcerers to engage in wars of souls that would prevent them from working some of their terrible magics which I may have been reading over lunch It's like, yeah, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just Damn. having lunch, reading some... <laughs> having lunch, reading, reading lunch. about corrupting souls, you know? <laughs> Agonizing <laughs> doom, black plagues. Uh, yeah, well, the usual. Um, this one may be a little, you know, the naming can be a little unnatural, guys. Sometimes it's a little difficult to parse, but this one is called Draw Forth the Heart. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's that's tough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Metaphor is not a big thing in, in Conan. <laughs> Very much. No. What is on the tin no. is on the tin. <laughs> could be, it's a, couldn't be more blunt. It's, this is what's happening. Here we go. Oh, yeah. right. I, think, I think Howard would have gotten along well with Stephen King. Just saying. Mm-hmm. I think that you're right. I think King but, is a big, or was at least when he was younger, a big Howard fan. Because the quote yeah. you see drifting around about Howard's, like the quality of his writing is often the one from Stephen King. Where he talks about the yes, I always describe it as muscular writing because it feels like it's so energetic. But there's King's quote is much better <laughs> than mine, and I just don't remember what yeah. it is. I'm just thinking when King says, uh, it. "I'll tell you." Well, the heart of a child. I'll tell you what it is. I have it. Well, I'll tell you one quote anyway. It might not be when you're thinking of Kevin. This mm. is the beginning of a script I wrote about Robert E. Howard, mm. where I quoted various people. 
Um, and I'll tell you the three quotes because I think everybody on the channel will appreciate the three people I chose. Yeah. So the quote that, you're, that I'm going to reference from Stephen King, may, which is, may, may not be the one you're thinking of, is anyone who doesn't think the imagine, imagination can kill is a fool. Mm. That's good, but it's not the one the, I was thinking of. From, yeah. I, that's what I thought, but that, that's one of his quotes. So like, clearly, big Ari Howard fan. Yeah, yeah. Neil Gaiman. I'd sit there in English pretending to be Robert E. Howard. And lastly, this is the most interesting one to me that I found. Back in the day, I was pretty into Conan the Barbarian. President Barack Obama. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> Not what you would expect to hear, no. but that is a true quote. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right? That's awesome. Okay. Then I need to throw this in there just for the heck. So I wrote a Conan, not even a pastiche. It's like a, a, a Conan like character. When I was in like junior high, I was writing about a barbarian used an ax, whatever, but mm. it was totally like a Conan rip. And I called him Barak, B-A-R-A-K. Um, <laughs> and, you're not, kidding. That was like 1985 or six, something like oh that. My. Yeah. Well, maybe that's why he saw that and then he became a big fan. I don't know. He, yeah, he, the world, he, he, he somehow Possible. read my coil notebook <laughs> scribblings. <laughs> you never know. You never know. But the point was when I saw those, was that you talk about like such a variety of types of people. Yeah. were influenced by Ari Howard, and that's what uh, to me is very interesting. And not that to get Robert Ari, Ari Howard, as we all know, got everything right, but there's something to his storytelling that we all kind of mm. gravitated toward. It's very, and we find compelling. Yeah, especially when like once yeah. you when you know more about the guy's circumstances too, uh, for when in which yeah. he was writing is just you know small towns, cross plains. Um, yep, yeah, it's crazy stuff. It's true. Yeah. Um, all right, so that has been yeah. our Howardian moment. <laughs> we're just honestly well, part of the fun. We know what we're talking about. Yeah. They're... <laughs> right? We're girl. just a bunch of fans. Anna Banana, we're 100%. All big, all big fans. So, oh, Anna says hi, too. She's a big oh, Howard fan. Oh, sweetie. Anna. Yeah. 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 Oh, Any albums lately, Anna? The hounds. Any hounds? Um, oh. What? Um... What do you guys wish to do in next then? So this is the Black Ape has been defeated um, at a little further cost. Uh, the fact that I had already moved the tokens down makes me think that uh, Jamila, Gabal, and Aira are taking refuge with the uh, exorcist that uh, they had introduced you to, whose name was uh, Noam. Yeah, they, had mentioned, they mentioned they were going to be leaving. Yeah. So, what are you guys thinking? You still have that uh, secret way in that uh, Olena, uh, is it Olena or Oleana? Olena, O-L-E-N-A. Oleana is- Oh, Olena, Olena. yeah, Oleana's from uh, Night Below, right, that's why. Oh, I've got my yes, head. exactly, yep. Yeah, yeah. yummy. Okay, Olena, Olena oh, Crokin. I, I, I do the same thing, yep. <laughs> we'll be waiting on Knox on Wednesday, there's some, yeah. I'll be there, thank you. Yeah. Very excited. So, oh, no, wait, I rolled a natural one. I'm not excited. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you really think I would do something terrible to you on a Wednesday and then take a, a oh, one-month break you know, for Star yeah. Wars? <laughs> what am I thinking? It's going to be fine. All right, so then... <laughs> okay. You guys are aware well, uh, of this. What what are... And what, oh, one thing to, to... So one bit of good news is is that what both Sir Isidore and uh, Olina would uh, be able to comment on is that there is a fixed well of power from which this sorcerer can draw so by expending it to mm -hmm. for one bind Meshkahema to summon forth the black ape from the outer dark to work whatever other kind of magics it, that he has done um, all of this is drawing from a limited well unless he's going to sacrifice somebody 
unless he's going to sacrifice someone, in which case, yeah, that's a pretty handy way to recharge your, <laughs> wait a second. your magic points. <laughs> yep. That's true. Because I think you mentioned that last time, and I was like, wait a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, would, I would think that Sir Isidore and I have uh, made sure that Hackbound was uh, familiar with that. Now, do, you, do you guys honestly think that I would uh, set you guys up to suggest he's, uh, you know, weakened and then have you arrive at his house and find all the staff have been murdered and their power now draws oh let me think about that for once no <laughs> no i don't think so <laughs> terrible idea <laughs> So this I is think why we love playing with you because we are all on the same page and we love it. Like we're not even complaining. We're like, oh yes, okay, here we go. It's like we know it's a trap, but we we're gonna spring the trap anyways. What's it's the best a trap? Way? Heck yeah, yeah, that's right, a trap. So yeah, I think we had planned well, I on. I think Alina, uh, Alina, I feel like I think at this point because just picking up where we left off last time has sort of given her uh, feelings about what's happened or feelings slash knowledge about what she believes may be going on um, and kind of concur with Sir Isidore about what that might have been. And I think Sir Isidore may have some other perspectives on it, but like overall we were aligned. And so it's Hakon for me is the person I'm sort of looking to, to be the leader because she is still, she, you know, she knows that she's not very powerful um, as a, uh, any kind of uh, magic user. Um, but she has a vendetta that she needs to um, execute. Um, so she really emotionally wants to go forward, but intellectually she knows that if not for her two companions, like this would be a non-starter and she would have to just kind of run away. So mm -hmm. she's sort of looking to them to guide her in terms of what the next step might be. So I'm trying to remember how, I think that, uh healing is only like one per day or two with a full rest like 5e or um 3.5 style i think that's right for hit points um yeah i think so <laughs> that's my recollection and we used a salve on hack on last time that's how oh, we got from it, three <laughs> plus your constitution modifier plus your level per day that is one, way yes, more generous, day. yeah. So that would be yeah, that's, yeah, I'll take it. five plus three plus what so is yeah. Hakon's... Con bonus is four? Plus two. Plus two. So ten. Yeah, because Constitution oh, is 14, he's... right? So. Yeah, I still think I have them juiced oh, raging? up from uh, raging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could take it back down to 14. Yeah, and your strength should be 18. And I think, the, does your dex go down when you rage? Uh, nope, just plus, oh, minus two to defense, plus two to will saves, plus four strength, plus four con while you're in yeah. Crimson Mist. Crimson um, Mist has been. So that's plus two. So that means if you did, I'm not saying you need to, but if you did rest for the night, you'd gain 10 hit points back. Uh, and then I was checking magic points as well. Do we want to rest for the night and hit him super early we could try the tunnel with the, where the croc was mm. your power you points so? yes. uh, yeah i mean what to your point we need some rest before we do any approach whether it's through the croc pit or the other door we observed so unless there's some other way to Gets oh. you healing other than resting. You gain one power point back for every two hours of rest. Oh. So that's actually pretty fast. I think your blue bar is your oh, that's cool. power. So uh, nothing yeah. you actually need okay. to. And like Sir Isidore as well, you uh, got plus zero to your con, but that would be still th uh, eight points back from an evening's rest. Do you want to go rest somewhere random? And just leave this house all empty. Oh, Lena has probably been staying somewhere. It's probably quite rough, but you know, if you do yeah. want to say stay somewhere that isn't quite as fine as this, Olina would have somewhere she could. Yeah, a neutral site would be good for the evening. Okay. Yes, I can show you the way. Follow me. All right, so let's do this. Let's have some 
Why don't you... Ooh, 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 ooh. Who's got uh, knowledge local at a decent score? I've got... Are we going to roll some decks? Score. Yeah, no, no dice tonight, Dave. We got a uh, anti dice. <laughs> yeah, actually, both uh, Olina and uh, uh, yeah, I got a yeah, me too. We're both at but plus nine. Yeah, but go for it, um, Jamie. Twenty-one, nice. So I think you've you sort of had uh, spied out, and let's take a look at uh, the grab your tokens here. Oop, wrong button, Madison. There we go. Totally blanked on how to play the game. <laughs> there we go. Well, we all, yeah. We're yeah. All on the how same that page. doesn't happen more often, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Especially, especially Kevin, who probably, my guess is, right. I'm going to guess, he probably plays more different games than all of us combined. Yep, for sure. I right? have a lot of very accommodating games. We, I get to play with a lot of very accommodating players. So I know that. you know the rules somehow. Well, so, <laughs> like sometimes game, I'm like, what are the rules again? <laughs> like, and I was a game designer. I'm like, what? And then you do what? I even do in D6. I'm like. And what happens now? You roll multiple six-sided dice? Oh, I see. Okay, cool. That sounds like a great game. Well, we'll, oh, be, we'll be leaning pretty heavily on you for those uh, D6 uh, sessions. Uh, no, <laughs> we're not. Sessions. We're leaning, we're leaning, we're leaning, we're leaning on Will. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. 100% yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Will is like even, yeah. All right. So where would you guys think you'd like to hide out here? Um, the... So uh, Alina has a like an alleyway or you know someplace similar where she's been sort of sleeping rough to keep an eye on uh, um, mm -hmm. Tutamon's place uh, as a refresher. Each of these locations. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, I will say the the mongoose Conan books are an absolute pleasure to work with. There's so yeah. much great stuff in them, and they're so like they're, they look so evocative in that way that um, third edition books do. Like they just have a, a certain quality. The borders yeah, and whatever else, yeah, love them. Yeah, totally. Okay. Mm. Okay, here we go. The different uh, areas. Sword, I believe, is where the Aquitanan steel uh, swords are crafted. Uh, so those are like craftsman's markets. The yellow craftsman areas is where they live or sell. The slum is in the orange. And the blue is the caravan-style districts. The Tutamon down here. Tutamon, yeah, in the southwestern uh, quadrant. Can we stay relatively, you guys want to stay relatively close there and then we'll rest. And as soon as we feel rested, we'll hit them before they get up and have breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe down okay. in, um, uh, Sir Isidore will be able to find you a, a squat somewhere down in uh, Tiragon maybe here, because that's where Tutamon is. Or do you want to stay in the same kind of district? It's in. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let me tell you what, what is sin. Slum houses the city's building laborers who maintain and build houses, temples, and walls uh, at the dire uh, direction of the craftsmen. The buildings here are usually given fresh coats of white paint, or sorry, whitewash, uh, or a thorough cleaning about once a month in most parts. There is a little, there is little garbage to be seen in most of the district. Guards regularly patrol the sin. Uh, the streets, alleys, and buildings uh, nearest Kuyash, however, get progressively dirtier and tougher. So Kuyesh is the north there. Hmm. How about uh, uh, Lugan Zagesh? Lugul Zagesh? I must admit, I just really wanted to say that out loud. <laughs> is that uh, the well, yellow you know, Who doesn't? Yeah. Below? Is there like just 
description for that one, Kevin? Uh, there is. Uh, so uh, Lugo's a gash. This craft ward specializes in laundry and soap. On foggy nights, a strange apparition of a man holding a bouquet of flowers can be seen walking the streets alone. The people of this district avoid him and believe anyone speaking to him is doomed. Uh, someone, uh, some believe that they put food down in his path and do not speak to him. They have good luck the next day. Prostitutes usually live in this district and openly ply their trade here. There's a couple of reasons why you should want to frequent uh, Lugal Sakash. A good night's sleep might not be one of them. Good night's yeah, sleep, maybe like not, that. but you could get very clean. Uh, and companionship is uh, ready at hand. Plus, depending if you got food to spare, you may find some luck the free, uh, next day. And I won't be the only doomed soul in the region. Exactly. Uh, oh, Alina, you may not have known from uh, Hack on Doom Winters. Uh, you, George, the player, will know because you were the first one who took on his mantle. But when uh, he, Snow next touches his head, he is doomed. Oh, I know. Oh, I'm very well aware of that. <laughs> I, I somehow managed to escape it, and I pass it on to Dave to deal with it. <laughs> Sorry, so <Dave>. then, perhaps <laughs> somewhere bordering on those two, um, Isin and Lucas Agash? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So we can get clean and still sleep. We maybe see, like, um, Sir Isidore, you exchange a couple of, uh, you know, coppers with uh, someone in the district, and you've gotten use of one of their uh, back rooms or something for for the evening. Anything you guys wish to do with your evening? (sighs) Clean the blood up. Between mending our wounds, maybe talking about our plan for tomorrow, and... I know, Hakan, you had mentioned going back through the tunnel and the other option would be we saw that side door that was being used. Um, What other options do we have? I guess we could try to just hop the wall somewhere too uh, as a third option potentially. I mean, one thing I would do that's sort of unrelated to everybody else is that once we settled down for the night and everybody's kind of either going to sleep or whatever they're doing uh, will try i will ultimately try to look up at the stars and make a prediction about the following day uh, Mm. which is my astrological prediction um oh nice is that one of your yeah okay what does that do mechanically so um it takes three hours to cast which is why i'm waiting for everybody to go to sleep um uh, it's got a DC, blah, blah, whatever. Uh, but on a su- successful skill check, the target gains plus one insight bonus to one skill check, ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Yeah. Uh, the next are day, there so. other spells you wish to cast before? Because you would have, uh, you know, like if you took yeah. f- a couple of hours of rest, you'll get your magic points back or your power That's points true. back. Yeah. I'm not sure if there are any any ones that. Uh, I mean, they kind of all sort of because of my astrological bent, they sort of go back to that because the rest of them are more uh, in the moment, like summoning a beast or that sort of thing. Okay. Um, so I think. Sure. In trying to help my companions uh, and myself, I just want to try to understand when what my, we might encounter um, tomorrow. Um, and so this would give me some insight into what that might be and that I can apply that. Okay. So, Sir Isidore, why don't you give us a knowledge arcana check? Uh, for that. And then, um, Olina, you, would you give us a knowledge arcana check for your spell as well? Yeah. Nice. So, Sir Isidore, oh, amazing. Look at that. Wowzers. All mm-hmm. right. So, yep. you've got your uh, your plus one bonus banked, and I'll let you apply that after cool. the fact as well. So, once you've seen the oh, result. Oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that just seems like the oh, great. make that a beneficial thing. Um, oh. mm, 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 Sir Isidore uh, will give you an extra point of fate for setting out the meal for the, um, what do you call it? Uh, for the wandering spirit. Then, 
Anything else you guys wish to do with your evening before I make a surreptitious roll? None, none. No, okay. no surreptitious rolls. Okay. I'm against that. Let me just, okay, I've got my roll. Let me just uh, <laughs> oh, no. set up my screen and then uh, kind of. <laughs> and it's right. always later like, oh, we should have done X, Y, Z. <laughs> we All didn't right. do it. So it's our it does mean then. that uh, Kevin's the Tutamon will also have an opportunity to recover his power points. That's true. So then, on the upside, uh, whether it's because of the good fortune that Sir Isidore has uh, brought before this, and I think it, you can... It's... Uh, how is Sir Isidore approaching this thing with the... Um, the flower bearing... Excuse me. Oh, that's super rude. Sorry, guys. Um... The how do you um, approach the uh, what do you call it? Yes, sorry, D. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, the I had a friend who used to joke about that. About like you can tell who's who's uh, you know watching on the bus. Just pretend to yawn and watch and see who yawns next. <laughs> when um, you, how does this series go about placing this thing down? Does he try to no. like? Uh, predict where the guy's going to be? Does he ask some people about it? Uh, or Yeah, I think he would have hopefully asked somebody familiar with the area where they'd seen it before uh, or okay. where it frequents, and then he would have found a spot along the way and laid the food out in like a circle or something to kind of get its attention. Yeah, and I think what you would see, if you do um, stick around for what you would see is, I mean, the streets are widely empty, and uh, you maybe pass. Um, no, I don't think there's, there would be anyone else out because it's a risky thing, right? Like you don't want to be running the uh, line between good luck tomorrow and being doomed is probably, you know, someone who really needs something good to happen tomorrow. So you, the streets are, at least this stretch of the streets are completely empty when you see this uh, almost like a, like a, it's not an apparition because you can see him clearly, but there is most definitely something unnatural about the way that this loincloth wearing, unbelievably thin man, long wild hair and a matted beard carrying uh, a small coat, like a collection of bright and vibrant flowers. Uh, and the way he walks th along here, it's... It's almost at a, like as if he is lost in a haze or a, some kind of trance where he's just walking along at a kind of predictable uh, pace, but it's not a even step. It's not, certainly not a march. Uh, and he doesn't seem to be unsteady on his feet in spite of the sort of dreaminess that uh, he walks along with. And his eyes are closed, or the lids at least are closed, uh, as he walks along. When the way he's moving through these empty streets, because this is also a slum, right? So the streets aren't even, they aren't even, the buildings are not like necessarily built to, they're all sort of, you know, at different places in the, in the walkway. But it's a fairly narrow place that he would be walking along, so it's relatively easy to predict where he's going to be. Do you set that up uh, well ahead of time or do you yeah i think ahead of time um if i have any sense of his timing then uh i would try to put it there a little bit ahead of time just to make sure that he sees it yeah uh, yeah okay so you place that out uh well in front of him and and do you stand back and watch or do you I'll, trust um, that it'll grab the food from Hacken, who probably grabbed a couple bites um, as I was laying it down, and uh, <laughs> stand stand back a little bit. Yeah, uh, give give a little bit of space. I mean, if if we're able to see um, as he's approaching, that would be of interest. Yeah. So maybe. Yeah. So you place it down uh, in front of him, and when he uh, reaches it, he stops. Uh, in, in the sort of the, the loose stride that he has and 
without opening his eyes, you can see his head cocks down towards it as if to be examining what's there. And the his head then uh, looks up in your direction with the eyes still closed. And you can't help but, you know, kind of follow along and, and be looking in his direction. And as a result of that, you don't really see what happens to the food, but it is, it's just gone when your eyes finally are moved. And you wait to see if his eyes open, because that's sort of what you would be, I imagine, like kind of fixed and waiting to see what happens. But instead, what ha what you see is underneath that wild, matted beard of his, he speaks, but you can't hear it. And you can't get a clear enough view of his lips and even to, to lip read. Mm. Then he turns and carries on. And what you can see is that whatever food that was placed down, whatever utensils, um, I imagine you're not bringing like a plate or anything like that. It's just you're placing down things on, you know, uh, on the ground. It is gone completely. Whatever offering you made is has gone off to whatever you know, whatever place this, this thing takes its offerings. You cannot tell what has happened, but you can feel, um, you don't feel the disquieting presence or attention that you have felt when, say, Meshkahema looked at you or when other baleful sorcerers have turned their attention on you. Is there anything about him that would lead me to believe where he hails from or what his uh yeah he, i mean he looks was. the the like loincloths are sort of you know standard issue in the conan world in a lot of ways <laughs> uh but i mean it has the knot that sort of keeps it together is is more of a shemitic uh tradition the man has he's very very lean like an anchorite kind of lean um but he has that look of a shemitic man as well so he is likely at one point was a a man from shem and that's what you'd heard in in the local legends as well is that this man whatever this this entity is at one point it may have been a uh, someone favored by one of the Shemitic gods, um, perhaps Ishtar, uh, the goddess of war and fertility, perhaps Nurgle, god of war, famine, and uh, plagues. Oh, probably not that. Yeah. Ooh. Enlil, god of storms and humanity. Who knows? This could just be a, a spirit, a ghost, that uh, potent enough to favor some and uh, have uh, misfortune for others. And he uh, he carries a flame, or a uh, flowers or... actually. Flowers, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Yep. As a man holding a bouquet of flowers, walking down the street alone. I don't know what sense to make of it, but it's certainly interesting. Any I, uh, any thoughts, Hacken? You were favored now, too, so you will have... Uh, your green bar is your uh, fate points, uh, so you'll have five fate points now out of four. Oh. So, as you, Hacken. Hacken, what have you been doing while this... I think Hacken just cleaned up, and he's resting. He's like... A, a game mechanics aside, just like feels like he's spent, uh, especially after the Crimson Mist and yeah. having let let things go for a while. Um, just wants to like kind of chill, maybe just get yeah. on some food. And uh, Olina, you are you spent the those hours on the roof, I suppose. Yeah. So then, with... I think. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I think I and I like by after I had kind of sort of had that interpretation of the stars, have been preparing myself because I don't think I have enough power to overcome our opponent because um, I know he's incredibly powerful. 
Um, and even though I studied, studied under these wise women um, over this time, like I just don't trust that I can live up to what mm. they had done. And um, so I'm just uh, kind of trying to use my knowledge as opposed to my magical ability to think forward into what situations we may get ourselves into. And ultimately what she realizes is that she's got to do what she can um, in terms of her own ability, but she's got to rely on her two companions, which she kind of doesn't like to admit. Um, but if not for them, she wouldn't have the chance to kind of uh, use what she can do to um, ultimately uh, not only get her revenge, but also do what's right. So just as a refresher to the way that the War of Souls works, is uh, it is a magical attack, uh, using your magical attack bonus, plus uh, if you know the entrance spell, which I don't think you do. No, uh, I don't. don't. Nope. Okay, so then you got that. Um, but I think so I will get it, if I want to, a plus one from my insight yes. from the night. Yep, yep. Um, so that's why I was thinking, like, this might be a good idea. So you make a magical attack roll, and then they resist it with a willpower saving throw. If they succeed, the War of Souls fails. Uh, if he fails it, then the two of you are engaged in a War of Souls. While engaged, um, you do not threaten squares, you don't dodge or parry, you don't move, and you cannot cast spells. What you can do is try and drain power points from your enemy. And you can keep a total power point equal to double your starting number. So you could have up to 16 okay. power points. Okay, um, that's cool. You make an opposed War of Souls check, so that's a, a attack bonus uh, check. If you win, you drain 1d6 power points from your opponent. If this reduces him to zero or below, any further drain causes 1d6 wisdom damage. You don't gain any particular benefit from draining the wisdom, but if you reduce it to zero, he is helpless. Mm. Okay. Staring into the de eyes of a demon is risky activity for you gaze into the abyss, and the abyss gazes also into you. Any character engaging a, a demon of any kind in a war of souls must make a corruption check uh, every time the demon successfully drains him. So it's a because it's gendered, you're fine, you know? Fantastic, yeah, yeah. we're all works right. out good. perfectly. I'm good, yep. Um, you can break <laughs> off a War of Souls by winning an opposed uh, War of Souls check in place of making an attack. Okay. So that is yeah. something so that- So I kind of know the like story version of that in my mind and like I'm definitely afraid for what may transpire this this day when we, once we all wake and to, um, go about our plan. Oh, and both Tutamon and uh, Meshkahema are no doubt quite powerful entities in their own right, so... Yeah, they seem like it, yeah. All right, so then, apart from that, unless there's anything else you guys wish to do with your evening, uh, you successfully complete your rest, guys. So, yes. um, Hakon, you'll recover 10 hit points. Uh, Sir Isidore, you recover 8 hit points. Eight. Um, and Oleana, you recover all of your magic points. So you'll be back at eight. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, your red bar is your um, your health. So if you adjust that, that should adjust your hit points. Yeah. Okay. Then, what do you guys wish to do today? Are we going to search for undead crocodile? I mean, it's probably dead. It's probably dead crocodiles. <laughs> um, are we mostly dead? Yeah. <laughs> There's not ventral yeah, like... either. Um, I yeah, I think that's what we agreed is we'll go look for that tunnel entrance or that sewer entrance. It was I believe that we went in originally to see. Uh, also, before we just go directly to that, like just look around to Hammond's compound to see if there's any notable changes or activity. Okay, yeah, good call. So, how would you like to approach the? changing or observing the outside i think we want to try to blend in with another group of travelers so that we don't stick out too much yep. um and just casually make our way by trying to observe what we can while following sure the caravan 
So who would like to take the blame? I mean, take the lead uh, for a uh, move, uh, uh, a, not a move, a hide check for us. This might not be good for me. Um, Hawken, maybe you're good at hiding? Yeah, I can do that. And I think, uh, Hawken, because you've got armor on, uh, you are taking a bit of a penalty to your stealth, though. Uh, yeah. What kind of armor do you have on right? Oh, maybe it's already on your character sheet. Do you do you remember if it's? Yeah, I think uh, a male hauberk. The armor check penalty of minus four and a speed cost of five. Oh, great! And it's already on your. Let's see here. Uh, so your stealth. Or stealth. Uh, hide. It's not uh, stealth. Oh, that definitely has the. What is going on here? Why is it minus? Four? Because your hide I have is a plus nine normally. Right. And so my total right now checked is plus, it says five. For hide? Uh... Well, actually, it says five plus brackets, brackets, a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, the total. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm a dummy. I was reading backwards. I was, I'm, I'm an idiot. Uh, so. <laughs> All right, then I don't need to look up your thing. So then, uh, Hacken, would you like to take the lead on that? Okay. What in huh? the hell on there? Uh, the, oh, wait, the minus four was applied minus twice. Yeah, uh, I think your armor check penalty, you just need to put a flat number in. It'll automatically subtract it. So instead of the minus four, just put a four as the armor check penalty. And then try um, hitting it again. I didn't put anything in, so I don't know what... Uh... No, 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 but on your character sheet, you've got the armor check penalty, right? Oh, okay. You've got I'm it listed as minus armor. four. Just take the minus sign out. Just have it as four. It okay. knows it's a minus a, a seemingly. So try that uh, okay. and make that change and then try it and hide again. Let's see if that works. There we go. I mean, not a great outcome, but uh, would you care to spend a fate point? Because uh, then you get to re-roll, and if you roll a nine or a two to nine, you get to add 10 to the result. Yeah. Yep, okay. And that is a 12. Wait, why is that only plus one? You had minus four. It's got a plus minus three in there. Yeah, I, I, my numbers all changed on my sheet when I put the... So there's a miscellaneous penalty that's also showing up on my sheet. Let's see here. I don't know if we thought we had to put something in there. Uh, oh, hold up. I wonder... Uh, no, there's not a hide thing in there either so your ranks are five your dexterity is 16 so be plus three um which should cancel out the minus three why is there a minus three on there Oh, is there a max dex bonus with your armor? Mm. Max, max dex of three. Of three, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that shouldn't be... I don't know why that's supplying the... Hmm. There's a miscellaneous modifier column that's got numbers in it. I don't know yeah, are you able to... Do. Here, let's do this here. Zero that out. Yeah. Like, I think the escape artist... Hold on, let's just try this here. Oop, come on. Freaking sticky goddamn thing. All right. So that is... Applying the minus four. Uh, so that's working now. All right, so 
That actually should be your second roll, Dave. Should be a... Um, should be four more than what it is. So that should be a 17 then. Okay. You satisfied with that? Yeah, that's pretty decent, I think. All right. Game turn. So what you can see as you're making your way uh, past you know, uh, blending as much as you can as part of the crowd past uh, Tutamon's uh, ziggurat is you can hear the sound of the lions within, but the gates are shut and there is no sign of anyone moving within, although that's the way things have been before. So things seem to be about the same as what they were when you were here last. Okay, I'll go back and tell the others. I think you guys were all going together uh, from the sounds oh, of things. Okay. Yeah, that's why we were, you were just taking the lead for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah. yeah. Then I'll be like, give them the modern day thumbs up. Okay. Yeah, it's, I guess it's good and bad that nothing's changed drastically. Yeah. Well, they haven't Great. had a lot of time. And they're down a whole lot of people. <laughs> yeah, they're probably still doing a count, figure out who's left. Yeah. Um, so Hakon goes over to Olina and whispers. Yes. He goes, there's lions in the courtyard. <sighs> they're often used as impediments to get through to the core of any place that is worthwhile. That does not surprise me, but not specific to Acheronians or our particular adversary. It may speak to his uh, geographic origins too. You've heard that he is a mm -hmm. Stygian sorcerer. Mm, yes, oh, that's After true. All. Um, he may have brought these creatures from his homeland. That is very possible. I can summon beasts from various places, but he may have physically transported them here. So I was actually worth talking about, like you're, the way your summon thing kind of works, like if you wanted to ensorcel one of his lions, uh, you certainly could do that with that spell. Mm, okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. So I will I'll kind of let them know that like, I, there is potential that I may have the ability to take control of it, but perhaps oh, one, yeah. maybe more, but the, the perhaps one of his beasts. Four PP is uh, is one uh, is is uh, sorry uh, is one large uh, creature, which would be a lion. And okay, okay cool. hold on, I've got my justifying my Stygian. Look at this fucking cover, guys. Oh my god. Uh, awesome. That's great. Giant snake. You know, this guy is stitchy. I wonder if there's snake. a giant snake to be found in here. Hmm. Yeah, I don't have... Large isn't on my cheat sheet. Oh, yeah, uh... Small and medium. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, large large is uh, 4 PP, and uh, huge cool. okay. is 8 PP. Okay, so I can do it. I guess I think I may be able to... To control of one of them. That Here we go. And a lion. Uh, George, a lion will have 32 hit points. Uh, it has a mm -hmm. dodge defense of 15, plus 7 to hit, 1d4, plus 5 damage. And a bite that does 1d8, plus 2. And it also has the pounce, uh, improved grab, the rake. So if it hits with both its claws, it can rake with its back claws for free. And it has scent. So... And so, if I were to take control of, of a lion, what in a combat round, let's say, yep. is that have what what, to, what is is my entire action to command it to do something, or how it does that? Is, let's see here. So a standard action work. Uh, this is summon, yeah, greater summon beast. Let's take a look. Yeah. Okay. So we know that the, the lions, as they currently are, without being controlled, are. Uh, or we suspect that they wear these masks that the allow the line allow them to walk past to go past the lines without being attacked. Yeah. But if maybe you can reverse that, it just cause a little havoc. Well, it depends on how many there are in one particular area. But at least if one of them 
start to not believe where who we are trying to say we are, I can kind of so get them on our side. The duration yeah. of uh, the thing is one minute per scholar level. So that's five minutes of control. Okay. Um, it's only a standard action to cast it. The animal will serve you without question, including attacking your enemies. However, they become uncontrolled if they sustain damage. At the end of any round Sorry. during which a summoned creature is dealt damage, it must make a will saving throw. Uh, 10 plus the damage sustained. Failure indicates the creature's pain overcomes its desire to serve, and it flees from the damage dealing source. Well, uh, it sounds like, tell me if I'm wrong, that I sort of give it like an overall command, like go do this thing. Yeah, like, you, don't, people, you don't have to spend any actions. Go, yeah. But if one of those things happens, it may be like, no, I'm out of this yep. whole situation. And yeah, okay. a Stygian uh, cool. lion has a plus two to will. Okay. You're rolling right. it though, so I'd let you use fate points on the creature oh. if you like. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. I might have to do that. So I convey this in uh, in terms of the universe to my companions. Like, um, there's. Definitely a chance I can control at least one of these creatures if it winds up being an adversary to us. I would suggest that we attempt to bypass them without needing this, but if I, I worse comes to worse, I can. Further, you, you actually, because of the range is like five miles, uh, you actually don't need to... It's five miles? Yeah, it's it's pretty bonkers. Because wow. what it's supposed to be doing is oh summoning God. something. But if you oh, have... Yeah, range five miles. Mm -hmm. If you wish to seize control of one of these things, you can get it doing stuff on the far side too. Okay, so that's so I'm going to suggest that's maybe it's part of our strategy is like knowing that I can from five miles away, not necessarily, but up to five miles away, um, I can put a command into the mind of one of these um, lions. Yep, uh, we could uh, potentially have an easier chance of bypassing quote-unquote security yeah well and you can even like the as soon as you take control the way and you do so you make a magical attack roll and then they whatever that t t number you roll is that becomes the target number for their will save and again their will bonus plus two which is not yet so i feel like i i say that as if i'm feeling kind of relatively confident that i can accomplish this how, how long would it take you to get the, the animal to comply so, i think it is relatively yes. quickly standard action really yeah oh, wow yeah yeah okay but i wouldn't do it obviously from five <laughs> she can miles cast away. and eat a sandwich at the same <laughs> time <laughs> yeah Ow. wow and it would wear off by the time i got there but no <laughs> if we got close it seems it seems to make sense if i got we got close that i would do that and then it would last for a while and to be clear too, when it says it becomes uncontrolled, it means precisely that. It doesn't mean it attacks you. So whatever is... is, Which is... Yeah. It says it flees, so either it would flee or it would act according to whatever is going on. And in Conan, I, this is not the kind of setting where there's like obvious magical glowing shit around it so people know that you've done something to someone you seize control of this thing it does what you want and no one knows why you know it seemed like such a nice lion <laughs> his mask for working yesterday yeah i mean he was a rescue lion so we knew that he had a history but i had no idea that he had a trigger of uh, you know people walking by a blackbird yeah, to I sort of convey that to you in a less humorous way um, that, uh, you know, even if I were to lose control of the beast, uh, it doesn't mean it's going to automatically realize that we are, I was the uh, one controlling him and therefore it wouldn't necessarily target me or the three of us. Um, it would just do go about in sort of normal business and deal with any threat um, I'll say too, closer. Alina, if you've got any other, like, again, because of the range of this thing, you've got the basic level of animal control as well, which is a cheaper spell to, to cast. Again, yeah. a five mile range on this shit. So, like, if you want to um, take control of a, you know, bizarre monkey, uh, you know, that's that someone mm -hmm. is, is dancing the bazaar or whatnot, or any other conceivable yeah. thing. I see elephants in here. You Same. do have the ability to control huge things, but it would tap you out for power points. 
Well, that's true. Um, I think so. I think we could charge through the gate on an elephant. Is what you're telling me? <laughs> yeah, I, they might see us coming if I do that. They might uh, leave. <laughs> Get out of the way. <laughs> I think I would go with the line, and then if things, you know, didn't sort of work out, I would like I would try to use my ability to um, take control of animals. Mm as a backup to see what specifically is there. Yeah. Um, but my really what I think, I, I don't want to like go in with a full on assault. Um, she is not, that's not her personality. She wants to like use our knowledge and, and information that we have like about the situation to give us the advantage. So her first choice would be to kind of sneak our way in, take control of the lion if that's necessary mm -hmm. and get the lion to of course not attack us but maybe potentially attack anything else in there and if that doesn't work out and it goes off on its own then my backup is like whether whatever other animals are in the vicinity mm -hmm. or at least that's what i tell both of you guys how do we f defeat the acaronian hmm. that's an excellent question i think there are different ways of course, if she is dead, it would be defeated. But I may have to engage with her with a, in a test of magical acumen. And I do not know if I'm up to that challenge, I will admit now. What we'll say I think to if we can when, kill her. Just a refresher for the mechanics for this, remember that everyone's AC, as it were, is a 10, modified by dexterity and by circumstances. Only when you are able to parry or dodge do you get a more effective defense on things. And one of the things that the War of Souls does, you cannot dodge, you cannot parry. So if you want to but sneak I can't up... Dodge, I can't dodge or parry either. Nope. So that's Someone, why I'm yeah. like, I'm not telling those guys all of that part of it. Yeah. I'm sort of saying, hey, try to murder her. and uh, But if you can't, I'll... <laughs> Because I have if, an ultimate goal, and I have to carry out my goal, which is revenge. And that's why, the only reason, I'm not being like, I'm not afraid, I'm not um, being uh, sort of uh, somebody who's, you know, worried more about themselves and their companions. I just want to accomplish both of these ends, yeah, if possible. It's worth knowing, too, that when you get into a war of souls, uh, even if you initiated, you still need to escape if the other one doesn't want to let you out. So if you start getting locked up in yes. this and it's just draining your PowerPoints, you know. Yeah. I did a little bit of research before we started playing tonight, and um, <laughs> this was my fear. So, yeah. So that's <laughs> so like, awesome. I kinda, assuming they don't know that, that's what I kind of say to them yeah. as like what I would like, what I would prefer, but I'm still willing to engage yeah. if necessary. So okay. that's my plan. And Alina, can you communicate with the animal that's under your control while it's under your control at all? Communicate in what way? Well, if it's on the inside and we're on the outside type of oh, thing. Oh, I see. Right? Like get information? Mm-hmm. Like I do not know of, about that. So, Kevin, actually, I don't know what the answer is. Uh, no, portion. but you do have your uh, your animal companion, though. And... Oh, that's true. Yes, I can. Yes, I can send my uh, raven in. Yeah, mm -hmm. with the raven, uh, whose name I can't remember. Uh, my raven's name is. Yeah. Um. Oh, did I not write it down? Um, I thought we gave him a name last somebody, time. We did. I know. I did. We definitely did. I didn't write it down in my notes. Um, so somebody in the chat who has recently watched. <laughs> me is session, it in the if you remember? Room? Hold on. Is it on the character sheet? No. Here? No. We kind of came with it on the fly. Uh, is my, oh, you know what? Is it? Is it further up in the chat? Oh, wait, yes. You know what? It might be. Let's it might see. be at the beginning of the session. Yeah, let me see. Sure. Ball. There we go. Uh, okay. I, I'm certain we gave him a name and it was... We No, we definitely did. We definitely yeah, yeah. did. It's just funny what it is. Um, oh, it's Mr. Raven. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I had to go back into like the full on chat log here. But I can go on. You can go on while I'm looking this up, Kevin. Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, let me see here. Um, I think I just so said it. one of your abilities is oh, link. You, you can handle your animal as a free action or push it as a move action. I think that you can get bait. Yeah. You can't like see yeah. through its eyes necessarily, but you can. Yeah. Um, I, my recollection was we. I could have sent kind of send it like off on its own. They got some information, yeah. came back and told me what it had sort of learned. I'm seeing, uh, but not like in the moment. I didn't. I just went through the chat I log and I didn't see anything, but I okay. may have missed it. You also have your. I mean, you have that spell visions as well, which is a one. I round. do. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, that's true. Um, so, old Enid yeah. uh, can. Uh, use scrying to see, you know, on the far side mm -hmm. of the thing. She can uh, send her, get get rough eye impressions from her uh, crow familiar, or she can, you know, control the animal and let trust it to make its, you know, whatever uh, judgment that it needs to make on the far side. It's also worth remembering, uh, Hakon is a incredibly skilled climber even with his armor on still gets plus five to climb and actually and with yours on uh sir Isidore, you got plus six so I'll, when you guys are making that decision i'll let you know that i have the ability to send my trusted companion my animal companion out to um survey the area that's open to, to um, view, uh, and perhaps I can learn something from that, mm. um, if that will be helpful. Um, but there's also the chance that it would be spotted, and because the people were de this is my fear. Like the people we're dealing with are people of magic. Well, here's let me ask you they this, guys. May, yeah, uh, we'll take our mid session break in a second here because we're half hour late for that. Uh, do you wish to? push for the sorcerer first or do you wish to push for Meshkahema first? My vote is Meshkahema but I uh, I will defer to the two of you. Well, I think I think we would agree um, not to speak for you, Hacken, but I know that we, we learned that there's an order to this that will benefit us. Um, That's what I think. Yeah. What do you think, Hakan? Because we could be wrong. Meshkahama first, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Because the way you described it earlier, if we take out Tutaman and he's the only thing keeping Meshkahama from running wild, then who knows what she could do? It's like unleashed. Agreed. Yep. 100%. Mm -hmm. Literally. Literally, there yes. was talk as well about the that you would remember, uh, Sir Isidore, about the uh, Acaronians uh, being, in particular, uh, susceptible to their ancestral enemies, which are the sons and daughters of Bori, which Hakon most definitely is a biter. So then, with that in mind, um, why don't we take our mid-session break right now, and then we'll talk about how you guys are going to get in and try and slay this Acheronian demon. Sounds good. Yes. Okay. Here we go. So now for those we get into like we'll the back. Tower of the Elephant kind of <laughs> style of gameplay. We will be back in about five minutes. <laughs>
Let's maybe start by unmuting <laughs> myself. I hope everyone listening at home is having a wonderful start to their weekend. What start? I mean, they're having a wonderful weekend thus far. I guess uh, it is uh, already well into Saturday my time. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I need uh, creepy interior here. Do we want to set up a map or do we want to just do a theater of the mind? Let's see how long it takes our heroes to get back. And we'll judge from there. Let's see, let's see. What do we got here? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. George, I can't remember, are you a uh, Warhammer 40k fan or? Uh, you know, I would never was, um, when I was a kid, I think as all of us experienced, like that was such a prominent thing in, um, Dragon Magazine, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. So we're very well aware of it in White Dwarf Magazine, et cetera. But, um, once I started coming over here, uh, maybe 20 years ago, I started realizing that it was still in existence and incredibly popular here. Mm -hmm. And so now wherever I go here, over here, I run into Warhammer stores, mm -hmm. um, and so in what you guys play, um, the new, newest edition of the RPG, I went, I went to the store, I couldn't get in the store, they're like, we don't have that, what's wrong with you? I was like, oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, so I had to order it, but I did get it. And then um, all the different various versions <laughs> of the game that you guys have been playing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which one, sorry, yeah, did you I, get I, the I, Warhammer Fantasy or did you get uh, one of the yes. 40? Yes, okay, okay. Who's Warhammer that Fantasy, Dave. but then I have Wrath and Glory, and I have, like, all the games that you run. Oh, <laughs> man. Know. Well, then here, you'll yes. appreciate it. I just had sh dropped off Redacted Records 2. Nice. That's yeah, because awesome. it's yes. still, it's been out in PDF it's, for about four months now. Uh, but the or it's great. The print thing's still not out. So and they've got what they did in the redacted records. They split the talents. There was a bunch of new talents that are in it, and like A to H are in the first book, and H to Z is in the second book. So I, I see. Uh, yes, my patience That's was uh, <laughs> run yeah, out. I get it. Yeah. Totally get it. I just my, like my patience when I went to the actual stores. I'm like. Wait, this is your game. <laughs> you don't have it in the store. Like, no. So I had to keep ordering it. But all, it was cheaper ordering it over here than over there. So I would order it over here, ship it to my house here, and then put it in my luggage and take it with me back. To oh, the nice. US. <laughs> like, but I do now. I all the games that have been run on the channel that are Warhammer related, I now own oh, uh, nice. every single one. Of them. <laughs> yes, every single one of them. And I don't play with you guys on all of those. But I really enjoy watching you guys play, and then it makes me like get all the books and like <laughs> it's 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 really well done, and um, yeah. I have a great appreciation for it. So we were joking um, on yeah. the the players uh, channel of because uh, we're we're working on we we got to, uh, Imperium Maledictum is probably the next thing we're gonna uh, play for a little bit. Uh, on Fridays, and the I said like, oh, it's it's just such a, I forgot what a well designed game th this is, and the immediate follow up was, I mean, as opposed to the poorly designed games that C Seven makes, like <laughs> I, I, right. every game of C Sevens that, and I know that Wrath and Glory was inherited from uh, uh, Ulysses Spiele, but uh, that's yeah, they, they they did a couple of tweaks to it, and it's uh, that Imperium Maledictum and Soulbound and Warhammer Fantasy Fourth are fucking great games. Well, but I will say, like, you know, having worked for Lucy Spiele on Toward Eternity, like, um, oh, yeah, you right. know, they have, they have, yeah, um, they do things very well and other things, you know, they do their version of things and maybe it would be the way I would choose to do them. Oh, but, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, that's, and there's something, it's not like a bad, it's not a bad thing, it's just a different um, sort of style, I guess, is the way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but all the Warhammer stuff that I've picked up so far, it just, I, and so uh, the newest Warhammer uh, fantasy roleplay is fourth edition? Fourth edition, yeah. But yeah, so I, I mean, when I picked it up, and that was a year ago, when you guys were playing it, I was like, I gotta get it. I'm here, why do I not have this game? I was like, I picked it up. I could they wouldn't sell it to me because they don't have it, so I had to order it. <laughs> but when I got it, I was like, this is awesome. Like, I really loved it. It was my real my that was my first actual exposure to it 
And then the other games I picked up, like Road Trader, for example, I had to get from Noble Knight, actually. Not had to, but I got from Noble Knight because yeah, yeah. it was harder to find. Uh, and then Wrath and Glory, like, I was like, I, can't, I just have to get this game. So not only does it seem super cool when I watch you guys play, but the art is just um, mind-blowing for me. It's yeah. so great. And so I've gotten into that, too. But I haven't played any of them. Uh, yeah, but one day I'm going to. Well, we need to. Uh, we'll get back to Coder in a second here, but I'll, I'll put that. I'm going to put that in my notes because I know James has yet to play anything beyond one session of a Warhammer Fantasy fourth game. Uh, mm -hmm. So that will that needs to be Count rectified. Me in for like a one off or a two off or a four off or whatever. Like done. I would love to like done actually and done. dive into it because it's yep. super fun to watch you guys play. Like, and that's the. Um, Colin and I were talking about the fact that we haven't played in a game for a while, but I watch him play in that game. Fantasy, like, I yeah. watch him play the campaign. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, that's why we, he and I get along so much. And like, I would have played my character the same way he plays his character. And so, um, like, I really like feel like the game system on its own, it's great, but also the a person who would interpret the game system the way I probably would interpret it is having a great time and mm. that makes a big difference like it, you know it's the, the readings like, we all know this we've all, and we talked about this on the channel before in fact and kevin you've done some some great in-depth um like uh, uh, uh like thinking about this is that the way a game is written and the way it plays can be very different things um and so yeah. You know, reading the game, but then watching you guys play, like for both on both in both regards, like I'm like, yes, this is a definitely a good game. It, it reads well, it plays well. One day, I'd love to dive into it. So, Done. yes, count me in. Done. Okay. Um, then, guys, how? So I think George are... is saying, what George is really saying, Kev, is uh, that a Friday night two session Warhammer Fantasy would be before you before. <laughs> Yeah, you know. Before we jump into well, Elder know. Scrolls, yeah. Yeah, well, and Dave, I know you're totally against this, so I'm, yeah. I'm trying to force you. <laughs> well, into... All of these are games I, I truly, you know, uh, <laughs> I definitely do not have stacked up to a, a precarious height on my bedside table at present. Um, well, <laughs> definitely not the case now, that it is unsafe guys... that I pray that IKEA <laughs> table holds together. <laughs> So I, all of you will relate, I think, and Kevin especially, because I know you very well. Um, <laughs> I now have two copies of every game I love in different parts, different con <laughs> on different true. continents. And I literally am like, this is insane. Why? But it's because I'm too weak mm -hmm. to carry the heavy <laughs> game books from one <laughs> continent to another continent. So like, you know what's easier? Just fucking buy mm -hmm. another copy of it and just keep it in one <laughs> And that is, other copy that other is better justified than this morning I talked about my justification for having two copies of the Savage Worlds book. It's like, I probably have it open to two different pages at the same time, so I might as well own two copies <laughs> of the whole book. Yeah. I do feel better. I do feel better. Okay, <laughs> oh, that sounds <laughs> like extravagance, Kevin. That's I really know. Good, it's excessive. Actually. Although they are different versions. One was the limited edition. One was the regular edition. So it's not like um, I bought the same thing okay. twice. Okay. Yeah, come on. Let's not be nuts. Yeah, about this. That it's would like, be crazy. Two, 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 two totally different versions. <laughs> I'm running through yes. my hand. I'm like, I haven't done that with any games, have I? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, Flames of Freedom and Blackbirds, <gasps> both. That's cool. I have, because I needed that. Those ones I wanted up to. Same reason. Anyway, my stupid expenditures aside, let's try and kill some heroes. I mean, try and save yeah. some children. Uh, yeah, so, saving children. <laughs> How are our heroes <laughs> intent on getting in? You have the obvious way, the gate, there's the walls, there's the direct route, the noisy route. There is this secret way that uh, Olina has also uncovered. And it sounds like you have your target in mind for where you wish to go. I mean, Olina is obviously feeling like the secret way is probably the most effective, but she's willing to defer to the group. Your secret way was the way that you witnessed others coming and going. Do we need to be disguised or anything to use that door? Do you think? Or I, she well, saw she um, saw people dressed um, uh, not not in the same you know uh, regale. Wasn't a uniform or anything. Yeah. 
Yeah, where is he? What I recall is it wasn't like a uniform. It was sort of like they were kind of like doing their own thing, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it was just so th this was the... It's more like bluffing your way through to make sure they don't think you're like not there for the wrong reasons. Exactly. There was likely it. someone guarding the secret way in. That's the way uh, yeah. Tutaman's guards are made up. Uh, you did not. You saw normal people going in and out of that stuff, and just knew that they were accessing the perhaps yeah. with uh, the assistance of your as yet unknown unnamed crow. I want to say Ivan. He had a Zamorian nah, that's, name. But... That's yes, it is a Zamorian, Zamorian name, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't that. But you're right. Let's see here. I'm going to the Zamorian. I can't don't have it. Now I got to go back and watch. I know. Somebody in the chat. If anybody's watched it recently, let us know. Vanco. Um, but. Vanco? No. Bodan? I don't think so. Now I want to watch The Crow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I should just call him, like, Jason. I'm just yeah. imagining that Alina, like, Brandon? refers to The Crow as a different name every single time. <laughs> totally! <laughs> you know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Wait, that would be I funny. thought she said the names of was Ivan. No. Right. <laughs> no, it's, mm. it's, 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 it's Jacob. Not today. Anyway, let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> so then um, um, I'll, I will find it out eventually um, what, what are you guys yes. so what, what are you guys doing what do you think shall we proceed through the secret way and it requires us to bluff our way through though it's not secret in the sense that we have to be very quiet and stealthy it is mm -hmm. in the sense that we have to, bold, to convince those who guard the way that we are welcome to proceed through and um get to where we want to go what do you think i i like our chances up here rather than in the sewer but i don't know what story to stick with when we get to the door mm -hmm. um my so my impression kevin tell me if i'm wrong is that the people that i observed were sort of mercenary types but they weren't necessarily on a side. They were like, whoever, you can pay us? Great, we'll, whatever you want to do. So it would be, we have to just make sure that, which is, I think, a little bit easier. No, to, like, you, you don't, that to be honest, you don't know what's inside there. What you know is that people go into a room, uh, into a house that is near here, and they gain access to um, Tutaman's ziggurat. It's another way of them get, getting okay. in. You're okay. assuming that is, is guard and that's, uh, guarded, and that is probably not a... Um, uh, not an unfounded concern. But yeah. You, you don't know what's in there. You don't know wh how they gain access. It could very well be that there's just a secret panel that you need to know about in order to access something. But you know That's for certain okay. that people who have gone into that room have then been seen within the ziggurat. So there must be a secret way in through there. Okay. And those people that I have seen, if I recall correctly, they didn't, they seem to be of lots of different types. They oh, weren't yeah. like, this is a unit warm group okay so that's helpful it to must us. be the spies um, or, or the other contacts of the sorcerer you would know that okay. yourself that like there is there's a degree to which sorcery can definitely be a powerful and terrifying force too but it's also a matter of like using mm -hmm. the threat of that to keep your other minions and so yeah. forth in line why don't we right. just keep it keep it uh simple my grandfather used to say the the best lies also contain the truth we know information about mm. a missing girl that the guards have been looking for. This is true. So if anyone yeah. asks us, that's why we're coming, coming back. But should we come up with a reason that we are associated with for Aman? I don't think we, we will be questioned. I don't think we will. Is this a secret, secret way in? But just in case, I feel like we should have something we can say and we all be on the same page. Um, are we s simply mercenaries that are in the employ of our adversaries? Or have we been sent on a specific mission to find out that information you brought up? Which might be a good way to go, actually. Both? <laughs> or mercenaries Both? or spies? Mercenaries or spies? Probably. I mean, the people we, I would, I'm gonna guess the people that would, might stop us wouldn't know anything about anything. So we probably can like very like generically bluff our way past them. But 
I think my feeling about um, my feeling about um, Olina is sort of that because she's essentially I can't remember if anybody remembers this from past sessions, but she's had two families that were like wiped out. One was her biological family, and one was her sort of adopted family, who are the wise women. And so she is always concerned that her family, and now you guys are my new family, uh, are going oh. to suffer consequences. I know. Make, make a save against bonding. Oh my god. Yeah, no. TPK. <laughs> Impending TPK. <laughs> this is, I, 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 I think way too much about these things in between sessions. Um, <laughs> maybe is the problem. But that's kind of what I think would make logical sense for her is that she sort of feels like she's been a, not abandoned twice, but she's lost her family twice. And this is her new found family. Mm. Uh, and so she doesn't want to lose them as well. So she's concerned about their safety. At the same time, she wants revenge and there's lots of other things going on. So she's conflicted. Um, so she wants to have a plan that's gonna make sure we get in there and allows us to accomplish what we're gonna going, uh, to, uh, you know, uh, intent on doing. Um, but if we need to get out of there, she doesn't want to find ourselves blocked on the way back out. So we just want to make a mistake with the people on the way in, you know what I mean? Like who are like suspicious of us. She wants to like get past them. So if we were running back out, they would be like, Oh, those, those that's those people. Like, yeah, good. Bye. See you later. Uh, and not stop us from running away. Um, um, I want to point out, we, we just talked thinking. about the sorcerer, uh, you know, making sure they have minions who do their biddings. Olina is doing a wonderful job of leading our heroes to the conclusion of, you have to kill everybody. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> it's the lead a horse to water thing of... <laughs> Sir, Isidore, will, Isidore bluffs if they don't agree or believe us. I'll slay them all and we'll keep I, I, going. I would say the same. Sir Isidore had a silver spoon in his mouth as a child and uh, some of that maybe has worn off onto his tongue and he'll do his best to talk his way through it. But if things go south, we always have plan B. Um, do you, Elena, have any way of persuading people? Um, that we are who we are. Mm. I see, to be, uh, who, we are, we, who we are that we're saying that we are in the moment. Uh, um, I just want to point out quickly too, that is a fucking awesome turn of phrase, Jamie, too. Silver spoon yes. in his mouth and some of us worn off onto his tongue. Right. Uh, it's fucking That's fucking Howardian right. stuff right I'm there. Gonna, <laughs> I already am going to steal that. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to make a note of where we are in the session. And I can go back and find that moment and <laughs> take that dialogue well, from you. Immortalizing um, forever. That's right. Exactly. But I'll give Jamie all due credit. Um, but I think she, um, I think that she, just to Kevin's point, she knows that she's sort of not manipulating. That's a bad way of putting it, but she's sort of preying on their predilections for who, uh, what they would do as, as who they are, knowing who they are. Um, individually, just personality-wise, mm -hmm. um, but he's, she's sort of taking advantage of that uh, for her own purposes. So I don't think she's like, you know, t being uh, a person that no one would want to associate with. Mm. Um, however, uh, she, but but that you, but you're not wrong. I think she wants to like get everybody. She's not a to scheming sorceress. Wants. She's a scheming well, <laughs> sorceress. Exactly. You totally nailed it. That's the right thing. Um, you know, in this world, in this world of 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 Ari Howard, that's the way sorcerers are. Hundred percent. You know, that's just the truth. Yeah. Um, so, so she. So I'm aware of that. Um, so let's bring you guys. Your but, question. Yeah. I don't have something specific that would help us um going like pretending to be somebody or something that's not cool. who we are <laughs> yeah, let's go james is in chat he says let's play warhammer fantasy fourth edition and wrath and glory <laughs> <laughs> you got yes, it james. james we will we will ask and you shall receive <laughs> right. heretic uh so the <laughs> Um, what do you guys can see in the, if you, because you continue on where Hacken is kind of keeping an eye, you know, for, for a big burly Northman, he's easy, he is able to blend in with the crowd quite well. 
And what you can see, Hacken, is that it does seem like there is some kind of traitor inside this building that uh, Olina is uh, has referred you to. The merchant that look is in there looks a little like this. Not armed with the sword necessarily, but there is definitely a dagger involved there. And he seems to be speaking to people and they're going out. It The people who are going in and out of there, for the most part, that where you're watching, they seem to be... Um, they seem to be dressed like merchants as well. So this is this place is not far from one of the... Uh, what are they called? Not just a cat. Ooh. I'm getting my. This is another one I of those mean, games where I love having a stack of books that are all sitting open throughout the session. I mean, I may need to just get rid of this hauberk, this soldier's armor. Mm. I don't see any soldiers going through. And George is muted, so we're all gonna cheer. Oh, you gonna toast Mo? No, no, no. Yeah, <sighs> but I realized I was muted, and I was like, oh, good, because Dave was still talking. I didn't want to talk over him, so. <laughs> what, Hackett, why don't you give us a uh, perception check, please? Or a spot check, forgive me. Your favorite, Dave. Spot check. Come spot out. check. You do need to give the faux Russian accent, though, uh, while doing it. That was, yeah, that was oh, good. Shit, fuck. Sorry, I hit the... Not great. I, I have a plus 12 in my spot. <laughs> oh. Hold on, right. I, I hit the... Sorry, guys, I, <laughs> I dropped out of the game by accident. Hey, quick, let's just quickly slaughter everyone. While <laughs> yes, I'm going to make attacks. Here we go. I'm going to cast spells. <laughs> attack, attack, quick, attack. Yeah. Ah! Uh, yeah, we killed everybody in that room, Kev. There's nobody left in that room. No, but... Yeah, they all died. Sorry. We well really, played. We almost got killed, but no. Yeah. They they them the I was only going to say, Dave, when you were talking and I was trying to talk over you, uh, that... Kevin was saying that he you know, like is a good excuse to like pull out some books. I think we probably all have every <laughs> version of every book from every version of the Conan game because we're such big Conan fans. <laughs> or at least at least the core rule books of all the various editions that have come out since since they. In fact, I have the DSR versions. I don't. The uh, game. I never don't. Really, they're, always, they're always so pricey at a crazy uh, amount. They that are I'm like, crazy oh, I'm price. Gonna... I have really. I have... Oh, maybe yeah, I should sell mine. <laughs> All right, let's start the bidding at a hundred. <laughs> no, um, I literally got them in 1984 or 83, whenever they originally released. So I have no idea what they actually. Oh have. I yeah, yeah. Realize, people, people, why are they so expensive? I guess because they were limited. And that's crazy. Just, they're just, not worth it. They're limited, and they're kind of. That's kind of the reason. I'm like, I'm never gonna run this. Uh, it's the same reason, like, I, I haven't got the D&D 4th Edition starter set yet, because I'm like, I this is buying it just to sit on the shelf. I'm never going to use the contents out of here. So maybe yeah, someday. I get that. But okay. uh, Well, there's no reason. You don't feel, don't feel badly about not no. owning, what owning were you the saying, original Jamie? Conan game. Uh, nothing. No, I didn't say Oh, I thought you said that. Oh, I've got uh, something we were talking about, the Conan games. Oh, no. Yeah, I was going to say I do have a uh, like a whole portion of shelf that's just Conan. You know, <laughs> you've got to have the Conan shelf. Um, yeah. So I definitely <laughs> I really enjoy looking at the Conan shelf and grabbing <laughs> books, any book randomly from the Conan shelf. Yep. Yep. Okay. Agreed. Rarely uh, has. Uh, and actually, Jamie, uh, 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 you got me playing uh, Conan Exiles, too. Oh, good. I good. Oh, nice. Uh, I have that, I too. I apologize, then. I apologize. <laughs> well, and I have a very... I have a PS4, but I have very few games. I have three games, yeah. and one of them is Conan and Exiles. Oh, nice. Um, and it's, su <laughs> yeah, it's super fun. So, yeah, uh, totally agree. So I think, I think we, we have done a good job, I think, on the channel playing all the different incarnations of... Yeah, we have all the different incarnations of Conan. Uh, to we haven't done GURPS, in perspective. No GURPS Conan yet. I forgot oh. about that version. Yeah. It's kind of, I think you, okay. you either were a GURPS player or you weren't. No one dabbled in GURPS of like, you know what? I need to I do didn't. enough math to file six tax returns to make a character. <laughs> <laughs> I was one of those players, and so I do love doing with tax returns. That's funny. I did play some GURPS here and there, but not by choice. 
<laughs> yeah. Just because my buddies wanted to play it. And I was like, all right, cool. I'll play whatever. Yeah. I don't care. GURPS is yeah, one of those so games that started me uh, down the road of making pre-gens for people because it was just like, you know, they're probably not going to want to play once we get past the care gen. So. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty funny. Okay. So, all right, it's so a good we're... game. Though. I do. It was a good game. I did have a good time just to like... Close the loop yeah, on that and conversation. I love, we're running it was fun to play. We have that um, um, hard sci-fi horror uh, charity session with GURPS coming up. It's going to be fucking great. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, Hacken, what you saw uh, is that for a brief moment, the merchant says something into the back and kind of pushes like a, a beaded wall to the side or a beaded door. And you can see back there one of Tutamon's minions. Okay. So there's at is, least... Is like a, does the people going in say anything specific to him, or is it all... He's they are, they're all talking to the merchant. They all talk to the merchant. And the merchant only went back there once there was, and he didn't go back there seemingly to talk to them. He seemed to go back there, and you spied one of those, like, gold-masked... Uh, purple you know um uh raymond um soldiers back there so okay. olina may have something uh there when she says that there is an entrance that is guarded it does seem as if there is at least one soldier uh, that is there protecting that that might be new as well though i think he'll t he'll tell them what everything he saw yeah if you want to spend a fate point, actually, Olina, you could uh, effectively what it would be is retroactively spending um, fate to to get like a, to re-roll a roll to, and add ten to the result of it's less to say to guarantee that there were not soldiers guarding that entrance before. Yes, I would definitely do that because that was my, my going back to my recollection of what was happening. Like I didn't think there were, but I think I'd rather be sure than yeah. not. So I would definitely be willing to spend okay. a face. So yeah, that. You, like you have been watching that entrance carefully. There were not guards there before, which means that the sorcerer may be concerned. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll pass along to my companions. For my fate point. So what would you guys like to do then? Apart from the one merchant who's in there and perhaps one or two, you know, uh, shop assistants, uh, does not appear to be anyone else uh, who works there in that place. Okay. Let's go. Time is now. Okay. It's not snowing. <laughs> so, and, yeah. <laughs> and suddenly an unseasonable snowfall in Shem. <laughs> We're staying in today. <laughs> Run, staying away from all the windows. Run for your lives. Uh, <laughs> with uh, so Hawken, uh, Sir Isidore, and Olina, why don't you tell us? I mean, Olina, I'm assuming you're dressed the way you look right now. But Sir Isidore and Hawken, what yeah. uh, what are you guys dressed like right now? Uh, Sir Isidore is going more for the trader look. Um, as, as he was trying to blend into the caravan earlier, I think he's just going to stick with that look. Okay. Um, so maybe some yeah. borrowed clothes from Gabal. Right. Okay. Uh, are you wearing armor? I am wearing armor. Okay. Um, yeah. So why don't you roll a, let's see here. Um, uh, I think this is one of those games that does have a separate, yeah, it does have a disguise skill for some unfathomable <laughs> reason. Like, you know, disguise comes up so fucking often you need to have a separate skill. It's not this only this game. There's so many games that do that, but like fold it into bluff oh. or something else, right? Uh, in which is my way of saying, yeah. why don't you give us yeah. a stealth check there, Sir Isidore? Okay. Oh, which you're also equally, no, not stealth. Um, hide. Why don't you give us a hide check? Oh, wait, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let me. Are you satisfied with that, or do you want to spend a fate point? Not at all. I am gonna spend a fate <laughs> point. Fuck that dice roll. <laughs> that's 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 a not spirit. my favorite. All right, let's try that again. Okay. There you go. Better. All right. So, so you are dressed as a trader, um, Hacken. What are you dressed as? And are you wearing armor? I think Hacken's going to take the armor off. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, make sure you adjust your armor penalty. Yeah, so I'll just uh, delete it. Yeah, just hit, hit zero. Put put the armor penalty into zero because like otherwise the damage rating uh, or damage reduction that stuff's not going to auto calculate anyway. The only thing that would auto calculate would be the um, uh, the armor check penalty. Oh, and the max dex. Yeah, I'll just take it all off. Okay. Hacken's getting naked. It's that time of night. Uh, well, he then... was wearing a big. He would have <laughs> grabbed a big cloak from Gabal's place okay. over the armor to sneak around town but like yeah this just doesn't seem if he shows up wearing their armor big northerner that's not gonna mm -hmm. that'll suck also you're almost at half hit points i mean like you're practically in the you know peak of health right now so um what um yeah also a hack and does have that like astounding maneuver for doing sneak attacks as well uh oh, so yeah. And he needs to be able to sneak in order to take advantage of that. What um, what is uh, Hacken dressed like then as he is making his way in to this place? Um, he'll have his uh, hair tied back with a little piece of leather and he'll have a cl cloak up and um, he'll just follow in along behind Sir Isidore. Can you like give us a high an, check, please? An attendant of some kind. <laughs> Gigantic attendant. This is my accountant. Um, he... <laughs> okay, amazing. Yep, but you're inconspicuous though. So then, um, as you guys, and Alina, do you have your raven concealed or on perched on your shoulder, as in the illustration? That is a great question. Um... I think not concealed. I think she's worried more that at some point when she needs to interact with the raven, she'd rather have it be that um, she went in openly with it as if it was not a problem. Okay. Okay. So you're carrying that in as yeah. if it's nothing. Um, Hackens yeah, is like, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, probably at least a minus four, but even then you're still got a 20, you know, so you're, you're quite good. So you walk in and uh, this fella, let me just get a name here. Um, okay. He uh, is in and kind of puffing away in that long pipe of his as uh, he is idly flipping through some receipts or some other kind of invoices or whatnot. Uh, the three of you walk in and his eyebrow um, at seeing you, uh, Sir Isidore, kind of keeps measured. Uh, and then he notices Olena uh, with the crow on the shoulder and his eye kind of, uh, and he says, good afternoon, friends. Oh, good morning. You went in the morning, didn't you? Good morning, yeah. friends. Yeah. Welcome to Zargebas. I'm afraid I, your faces are not familiar to me. But I'm always happy to make new friends. How might I be of assistance? I am Zargeba. Well, Zargeba, I'm going to look are... to... Good. I'm looking to you guys for the lead. Yes, sir. As the door will step forward. And does he have wares out or anything that's obviously <laughs> trading? Yeah, uh, yeah, there is. Uh, but it's also like... Um, it's like bolts of cloth and things like that, like big bulk trading things. This is not a commercial place where you'd go in and just buy, or a retail mm -hmm. place where you just go in and buy certain uh, items or whatnot. It's the kind of place where you're putting together a caravan to go elsewhere. You're going to go and arrange to pick up X, Y, Z things for your, you know, to, to bring with you to trade. Okay. So he is that uh, one of the oldest of uh, the uh, and most uh, insidious of uh, professions, uh, the the middleman. <laughs> right on. The, yep. Um, <laughs> I stab him in the throat. No, I then mean... I think uh, Sir Isidore will begin to kind of look at some of the wares and uh, say, "Well, Zareba, we are we are traveling through, and we have some." additional room in our caravan that we are hoping to fill with more goods that we may trade back home. 
So um, if you give us a bluff check, please. I was going to set a difficulty for a sense of how this conversation is going to go. Okay. What accent do you wish to be affecting? Any of the languages you speak, I think you could take on. I think I'll go with... Uh, <laughs> Acheronian. Lost the whole goblin. Not, <laughs> not that one, but okay. uh, Zamorin, maybe? Yeah. Somehow? Yeah, that would yeah. fit with uh, Alina, most definitely. Yeah. Okay. So he says, <laughs> ah, Zamora, you are... It's good to have friends from down south traveling. What sort of goods were you looking for, friend? Well, we, that is, we are not particular because we don't have, uh, we have plenty of room for whatever you have. And my friends are taking a closer look now to see if there's anything that may be of interest. But do you, what do you have that's if I might, particularly If I knew your destination, perhaps I might be able to give some insight into what is most attractive for those markets. Mm. That is a good question. I... Nemedia is to the north. Koth is, I think, to the direct north of here. Uh, Nemedia uh, is a little further to that. Aqualonia is on the far side of the, uh, those, whatever the mountains are called. Um, I can show you just for a geography lesson. Yeah, Koth is just north of uh, Shem, Stygis the south, Ophir. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to probably give him some too far away. So I'll just say that we're, our next destination is Koth. Ah, then perhaps might I suggest one of the heavier cloths, the summer, it's easy to forget that winter is coming soon. Uh, and winter, I hear the diviners suggest it will be coming early this year. These will uh, no doubt fetch a fine, um, find a ready market uh, in there. We will, it's come we will from the to. more mountainous regions of Shem. That makes sense. I think these will sell well. We can make a, a good profit. Um, good, good. Uh, anything else you are, I can assist with? Tell me, what's your most popular product here for the locals? For the locals, I sell, do not sell directly uh, to any uh, of the locals, but uh, instead service the caravans. Friend, how did you come to learn of, uh, come to find yourself at Zarkeva's? I'm grateful for the business. I would be grateful to be able to extend my thanks along to those I, who pointed you in my direction. I think that's where, um, and, and Sir Isidore will really do this, you know, where he's trying to like remember the name and then he'll tap Haken and say, who, who was the, the, the armor smith we met? that told us about Zargabas and spoke so highly of it. And maybe maybe Hackett won't remember, you know? Like, we'll just both be, like, drawing a blank. Um, Hackett, why don't you give us a bluff and let's just see. Hackett is like, she's like, I thought we were trying to get in. Why are we buying stuff? <laughs> He's totally lost. He's <laughs> like... Boring conversation anyway. Look! That's what I, <laughs> that's what I was thinking just now. We're in conversation. I'm going to give him the count of 30, or I'm going to cut this guy's head off. Uh, bluff? Bluff, please, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a good one. Oh. It's not bad. You want to do uh, fortune point or uh, fate point then? No. Okay. So, Hakon is stumbling over names, and you can see he... Hmm. Well, no matter. Um, was there anything else I could assist with? Or will this be... Mm. I'm afraid... F well, uh, Zergeba is always welcome to, or eager to make more friends. New friends do have to pay cash. 
of course that makes that would that would be just fine i believe that uh we can we can do this what is your rate for and i'm just gonna assume that we have we can come establish like a an amount for the amount that we're trying to get to fit for into sure one. like he'll, he'll give you yeah. a rate and there's no hope in hell that he have enough on you to be able to pay what he's <laughs> requesting sure <laughs> sure so we're, we're we're considering this you know yeah. at this point mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. i'll yeah. give you a dollar um <laughs> i'm afraid i cannot part with this from less than fifteen thousand dollars mm, okay okay, okay. <laughs> what about a dollar or <laughs> Uh, this point, I think Sir Isidore is probably going to look at Hacken and see if he wants to maybe roll give it, this roll guy a, <laughs> give this guy a, a, a I don't know a jostle to his head or jog his memory. <laughs> That's a jog you jogged it too hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, so, my friend, he's dead tired. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, can I sneak attack this guy and do like a non-lethal blow? Yeah, you, uh, you get to choose when you're using uh, non-lethal stuff. You get to choose whether they're knocked out or dead. Your unarmed strike uh, is plus nine to hit and one d three plus four damage. Yeah. And then hold on. How does uh... your maneuver work here? Let's see. Let's see. Uh. Yeah, the combat maneuver I was thinking of for you is sudden strike. Uh, you get plus yeah. ten to the checks, plus five to attack rolls. So remember, you can uh, power attack as well, right? Yeah. Do you want to power attack on this uh, attack on uh, this guy? Yeah, I think I'm going to power attack him with my fist. That I'll, works. Uh... So then you're with the f oh, you know what? Uh, fist might count as a light weapon, which means you can't power attack with it. Oh, that's fine. Um, huh. You know what? You could always just like double hand overhand, you know, Captain Kirk style double hand chop. Uh, I'm just going to punch him really hard. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, so, power attack. Oh, you can. Uh, except with unarmed strikes, you can absolutely power attack with unarmed strikes. So it'll oh, be, really? yep. Um, okay. You take I up to take minus. Off. That's okay because you only need a five. Remember, a ten is what you need to hit him. And with your surprise strike, you get plus five to hit. So you need a five to hit this guy. Okay. So with your minus five, uh, it's still fifteen. You add plus five to the damage. So one d three plus nine damage. Yeah, <laughs> he is well and truly out. And now let me just make a, actually, let me check and see what the. Can I make a dex check or something to try and keep the body from falling and making a ton of noise? Yeah, give us a reflex save. Cause that was like, in my head, I'm like, if he falls, it makes a lot of noise. I'm yeah, gonna... yeah. Or you know what? Yeah, I said that'll work. Okay. So you just kind of oh, hit this guy right in the back of the head. He oh, completely drops unconscious, and you yeah. grab him. Yeah. Put him down behind like a, some bolts of cloth, and <laughs> it doesn't look like he's even here. Yep. And then I move over to that panel where we saw him pushing on the. It was the actually button. just a bead curtain. A bead curtain. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll just walk past, walk through, like we own the place. Do you wish to listen first, or? I think he's I'm pretty confident there's people there. Okay. So if you walk, walk through. through like yeah, yeah. Let me do this. Uh, so I think we learned last time you don't need to click on your token to be added to the initiative order. So let's go ahead and roll initiative, guys. I'll add my guys in there as well and let's see uh, mm, 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 mm. 
Oof, I got 22. Yeah, I did not so not so well as 22. <laughs> yeah, and then kind of three. Hack on, hack on cracks that guy, and then it's a boring conversation anyway. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Look! <laughs> I have company. <laughs> Uh, All right, let me show you who is in there. And... Hi, James. <laughs> yeah, James is in chat. James is having a remarkably good... Uh, he's had a full night's rest for once for a Friday night. <laughs> so... Wow. <laughs> Right. Great. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be at max max hit points this morning. If <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where is it here? Sorry, I scrolled down to my. Oh, you know, yeah, because I scrolled down to my Conan guys before we started the session, and then I uh, screwed up and uh, <laughs> had to refresh. So we started playing this before. Here we go. Here we go. So I'll look for anything referencing Akpatana. Everything's in together. So here we go. Let's get these guys out. Let me give them some hit points. <laughs> really? You did? That is amazing. Dungeon using Spingo. <laughs> Let's see. There we go, guys. Full initiative. There we are. Okay, there are three guards back there, all dressed in the same um, strange Stygian uh, stylized armor that uh, you had seen before. The markings of Tutamon. So you sit back there and they look over and see that uh, there are, they sort of look over at you because you're just wearing a robe right now, Hackins. I'm going to go down to you and we'll start with you in the initiative order. So you walk okay. back there. Uh, anything else you wish to do? I can probably make Zargaba smaller now because Zargaba's unconscious. What do you do, Hacken? When they see you, you can see that they're like starting to get up. Hey, he's just going to ignore them and walk past. So if you walk back here, there does not appear to be anywhere else to go apart from like a door. Oh, I see. Up. I thought it was like, okay. Yeah, it's not a very oh. big room. It's this room is maybe like uh, 10 feet by like maybe 20 feet. And it's mostly filled up with stocks and whatnot. There's no reason for guards to be back here. Oh, okay. Well. Swords out. Hit somebody. <sighs> Oof. All right, so, oh, 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 uh, do you have quick draw? Um, is that listed on my... Yeah, it would have been anything I, I you do not. Do not. But, 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 you could spend a fate point to get a quick draw for the round. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, let's do it. Okay. Fate point. Yep. So, oof, that Akbatanian steel sword is now in your hand. What would you like to do and, with it? Well, I'm thinking that since they haven't uh, moved or realized what's going on, that I'm going to power attack them full on. Uh, minus five, because he's probably just like, what? And then all of a sudden, boom. Yep. And you get to add uh, double that to damage. Yeah, so that's uh, just a bit of a hit hacking. Uh, go ahead and roll damage, and it'll be plus 10 to damage. It's truly a ple pleasure to watch you work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that, does that, that does not include the plus 10, or it does? No, it, no, it does not include plus 10. That's does not include plus 10. Because of your, the combination of the biting edge of that Aquitanian steel and the Nord uh, might, you cut right through the first one. And he's down and dead. Olena, what are you doing? Oh, wait. I have cleave. Oh, you do have cleave. Yeah, yeah. Same thing as the last one. That's... Wait, do you have cleave? Yeah. It's listed in the, my feet. It was something that... Uh, uh, she got power it's not attack. A, it's, not a, 
it's not on my PDF, but it was added after. Did you add that? At, well, you haven't leveled up. Like you haven't gained any things. Did you gain cleave just for your when you spent a, a, a fate point? Um, I don't know. I do, I don't believe so. Uh, let's see here. I think we all just thought Dave was cool, so we're like, you know what, you should get. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually listed on my feats and skills, feats and special abilities. Uh, is it on the... your character sheet on the yeah. in the game in D twenty uh, roll twenty in the D in the roll twenty game, yeah. In the roll twenty mm -hmm. game, okay. Mm. Cleave, endurance, power attack. I wonder if I fucked up when I put that on. Let me take a look here. Uh... I wonder if I screwed up. Not shocking for me to screw up the pregens. Um, let's see here. Turns out just my handwriting on the yellow legal pad may not be the most dependable <laughs> thing to rely on <laughs> for character sheets. Yeah, I can't read my own writing. So oh, I get yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. My <laughs> my, uh, I, I had notes on one file that I sent recently to. Uh, my assistant, I'm like, oh, can you save this to the file? Because I don't yeah. want, I don't have a physical file anymore. And she's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> what language is this? <laughs> yeah, like, why, why would you bother saving this? No one else is gonna be able to read this shit. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> she's pretty awesome. That's great. I really, I, not, everything I've heard about her, she seems great. Yeah. If if not, we can just. I'm just trying to think of. I'm I, sure I'll you think. have it. You know, because power attack, it's, it's just sort of the. Yeah, the things that I would automatically expect you to, to have. Fuck it, you got it. Let's just use it. Okay. I, I'm sure I'm sure I got the handwritten copy uh, somewhere. So let's do it. Well, this is why you'll feel better when we get screwed anyway. So <laughs> exactly. Is it 18 hit? Uh, 18 does. Oh yeah, that absolutely hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Nice. Adding plus 10 to this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and gruesomely injure the second one. All right, uh, so that is uh, hack on done. Then it is Olina. Now, what would you like to do? So thirty so, damage to the second one. Sorry, there's thirty damage. The second one didn't kill it. Wait, wait, didn't you? I thought you said you did add ten to it. No, no, I'm not able to. Add oh, 10, not so able said, to. Okay, yeah, yeah. Then he's add ten. No, no, that's so two of them are down in a single sweep. Nice. Yeah. And Olina, sorry, what would you like to do? So here's what I would like to, here's what I'd like to do, and I may fail at this, but I've got this cool ability called knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. Um so what I'm gonna try to do is see if I can remember um any mention of uh someone who is um notable that they might re respond to if I invoke their name. Um, to tell them to like, we've been sent here by that person, um, which requires me to make a knowledge check. Um, it doesn't say exactly what kind let, of let me ask check. you. Just, yeah. Hakon has just cut two of them in half. I know. <laughs> I know. Getting I know. an answer might be difficult. No, but I'm, I'm better. <laughs> well, I wasn't looking for an answer. I was trying to like, you know, intimidate them into going like, we're badasses, like don't fuck with us kind of thing. But only because I'm not, my skill set is not about, um, you know, <laughs> take people down. It's about information. Okay. Sure, sure. Why don't you uh, give uh, us a uh, 1d20 plus 9? So, yeah, so, and just to be clear about my intention is like, okay, my companions have taken these people down, but it's, I'm trying to go, I'm going to build on, I'm about to roll, but I'm going to build on that by saying like, Hey, the, my companions wouldn't have taken you down if you didn't, you know, if you listened to what I was about to say, but you didn't. So therefore, some of you are dead. Now, are you going to listen to me or not? So that's what I'm ejected. But I have no, this is not my, yeah, yeah. the city I'm yeah. from, et cetera. So I may know nothing. So this is okay. just a straight so control with the plus nine. Here we yeah. go. Yeah. So you've got the name of, of one of the people I think that you have seen gone in. Are you intending on building up to a, um, intimidation role? 
Is that what you're thinking? I think so on my next turn. Like, so this turn was like about trying to recall who I might know that I could use. And I'm my fine next turn, with you I having done that them. before if you want to try and intimidate okay. this round. I, that's what, that's what I was, that's yeah, yeah. exactly what I, I was trying to go for. I don't even know I if think knowledge... I can intimidate me without that. Yeah, I don't know if knowledge's power even requires an, uh, an action necessarily. It's not clear on the sheet, but um, yeah, so um, give us I'm, I'm going to go along with what you're saying. <laughs> uh, go ahead. <laughs> give us an intimidation check. Okay, 23. Uh, there we go. Yeah. yeah. And that so is... Try. So I'm just going... We've been sent here by when you refuse to allow us passage, you will get more of what's coming to you as you or some of your companions already have, is what he's okay. basically saying. So he is demoralized. Uh he'll have minus two. Okay. I'll take it. Yeah, uh for the That's sort of her like her thing. Like her you know, I to me what she's all about, unlike my other characters that tend to play all about elementalism. Um, she's not like throwing fireballs around. She's yeah. like trying to use info that she's derived yeah. from various well, and people terrifying. and terrifying. Like, demoralize is not and a small thing. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's her. All right. Yes. So okay, then cool. this thing's. I'm gonna make a will or wisdom save. We'll save. We'll save. Not wisdom. Uh, nice. Okay. Uh, so he draws his sword. And uh, he's attacking you, Hacken. Do you want to uh, parry or you want to dodge? Mm, I think my parry is slightly better, is it not? Uh, your dodge is a little better. Dodge is a 16. Oh, my dodge is one. Dodge yeah. is 16. Never mind. Yeah, I'll dodge. Dodge, okay. Uh, so he uh, swings his sword at you. Nat one. So it misses you, poof, hits this, uh, uh, it's Pink. some kind of uh, a flower or something else that's on the thing, and it, <coughs> he is distracted. Sir Isidore, what are you doing? I don't know that there's any more use for this, this uh, guard, so I am going to power attack him. Okay, go right ahead. Um, I'll put into this okay uh he is able to uh parry now uh, i doesn't okay. have a shield I'll, I'll dodge instead oh it's the same okay. actually uh, he'll parry because you try and get that uh, sword in the way so it is a 14 you're rolling against 14 okay and then i add the four in on the temp mod right but before i roll because that's my power attack or uh, so if you're power attacking for four, you're subtracting four from your attack roll for the temp oh, mod, right. uh, yeah. and then it'll be plus uh, four damage. That's right. okay. All right. Unless you're two-handing your sword, in which case it's plus eight damage. Oh, I think so. Let's okay. go with that with the broadsword. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so go ahead. Uh, so your attack will be at minus four, but you need a just need a fourteen to hit. Ooh. Uh, I will spend the fate point. Fate point that? Yep. Go right ahead. Mm -hmm. Yep. And try once more. Sorry, every time I move on the sheet, I lose my spot. Where is it? Oh, it's okay. These... There we go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> but, oh, well, you get to... Uh... That was oh, a, I do have the 10 or... Yeah, that was a roll of a 3, so you get plus 10 to that, so okay. that is a 20. So that hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Plus 8 damage. Okay. So that's 16, and your AP is a 6. So that goes mostly through his armor. So let's see here. Oh, he is injured. Uh, let me go. Uh, Hakon! Hakon will, will point his sword at the guy and say, Open the door or die. Go ahead and give us uh, an intimidation check. Mm. <laughs> 17. Yeah, he... <laughs> Uh, 
you know, dust kind of, uh, or flower still in, kind of looks at uh, you. I'm going to make a... There you go, plus his hit dice level. Yeah. He stops. Pulls a lever and it... One of the... Um, the... Uh, what do you call it? The shelving units is actually on a hinge. Pulls by, and there are a set of stairs winding down in there. Um, Hakon points to the door and says, You need to find a new employer. He looks at all of you, pulls the thing off. You see a Stygian face that is absolutely terrified, and he goes racing out the back door. Mm. I roll a three my, for his uh, my, save, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, it might work ag- I was thinking it might work against us, but, you know, maybe this guy lives. Maybe he becomes a friend someday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Then, uh, so he goes uh, rate racing out, uh, leaving you guys free to make your way through. I'm assuming you're sparing no uh, or wasting no time and uh, racing yeah. through there. Yeah. Uh, yes, I would like to, but I have one quick question, and of I course. can't do this because we're racing through. But what um, Olina would like to sort of suss out, because this has come into play in her past, is whether or not they treated her differently because she's a Morian, or if she just treated her like anybody else who would have come through these doors and, you know, pretended to at least maybe try to seem like they were part of the organization. So the point is, I'm trying to see if she, if, if being a Zamorian is something she needs to hide going forward from this point onward is the is the question, or or if that doesn't oh, seem to matter to them. Uh, just because people hate Zamorians yeah, in general. Yeah, in fairness, uh, they are rife with uh, bigotry in the Hyborian world. So here's my well, let's, can I let me change what I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. I think that they probably don't give a shit. Like they're just like whoever you if you work for us, you work for us. We don't care one way or another. So that's what her assumption is. But oh, she's wondering if she noticed if they were like, oh, she's a Zamorian. We got to like what double you down on like checking in her. Uh, I mean, all, all of. Um... The people you've seen going in and out of uh, this place previously when you were spying are from all yeah. sorts of different nations. Okay, great. So yeah, there, there that isn't was really a, my question. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, cool. So that's I don't. So I'm just going to follow my companions and look. Let's. I'm happy to rush through. Okay. So you guys race through. What what is the uh, what is the strategy going to be for making your way down to uh, Meshkahema's uh, lair uh, cell? Once we get in and we see people, we'll have to stop and go stealthily. Okay. But do we have a plan? Are we going to try to stealthily get past? Or do we have a follow-up if they spot us that we, you know, can try to talk our way past them? Kill the Acheron bitch. <laughs> and then two them off. Yeah, I mean, if we're sneaking <laughs> and they see us, I don't know that we have a plan B. <laughs> Yes, he has it. And I'm, I'm always a plan B one. Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. just kind of come with it. Yeah. Like, I don't you know, know. You have a plan B. Hacken just <laughs> gestures with his sword. Uh. Yeah. Um, all right. Hacken's plan is always follow the along. same plan. My plan's always the same, just so you know. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, Dave, by playing Hacken, I would do the same thing. So I, uh, I appreciate that. So I'm on board. All right, let's do it. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think I'm third in the line. So, so. let's do this. Why doesn't uh, Hacken, why don't you give us a move silently check? I'm assuming you're taking the lead because. Oddly, you're also the quietest of all of them. Okay. Bye. Wow. Okay. Um, so there big, are one big, or two times, size. you know, moving like a stalking panther, uh, Hacken makes his way through here. And for a big man to move so quietly and to keep the light off of that massive uh, sword of his, Maybe even you keep that underneath the cloak to avoid it catching the light. There's once or twice where he will just, you'll see his meaty hand come up and you two stop. To, uh, one or two people will pass and then you carry on. Um, fortunately, while you know for making your way further up, this place is no doubt going to be much of a, a labyrinth. Uh, Olina, you know that sorcerers do that kind of thing to be able to confound those who would try and steal from them or worse, try and attack them. Um, but making your way down to Meshkahama's lair, once you are, 
and navigating your way around is is actually not that uh, challenging. So you guys will pick up with you reaching that door that leads into Meshkahema's lair. And Olina, would you give us a hmm? Give us a magic attack check, please. So I think there's a actual separate button for it. I think. I might be making shit up. (laughs) It would not be the first time I've asked for someone to roll something that doesn't exist in the game we're playing. So, let's see here. Um, Magic attack roll is at the top right next to parry bonus. Perfect. So you get down there, Olina, and there's just a there is a it's almost like catching a unpleasant odor that hits you. There is something of infernal power that lurks behind this uh, this door. And in fact, like you can't Oh, you're muted too, uh, George. By the way, so here we go. Charge to, to Mo. That's because Darwin's here. No, wait. Mm-hmm. He's not. I'm just by myself. <laughs> um, that was just a mistake. Uh, I was going to say, I'm, I, you continue, but I, I when I had that thought, I am going to try to grab my companions and like slow them down for a second. Yeah, but yeah. So you got him. Say, yeah. And your your crow is. Uh, Cawing and perhaps uh, Hacken and, and uh, Servicedor, you look back and you can see there's a look on Alina's face. And what is that look, George? Uh, total fear. Um, we must be careful. Beyond that door is hell itself, and then demons who live within it. This will be dangerous. We must prepare ourselves. What do you guys do? Unhide my sword. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Might be time to just lock in and have everything ready for the inevitable. Okay. I'm going to take out, let's see. I'm going to pull out my my Uzi. Let me just see if it's... Let me see. No, oh, wait, I don't have an Uzi in this game. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was, I, I was thinking we're, about... We're screwed. I was watching a, um, like, a no commentary playthrough of uh, Vampire Bloodlines, because I never played the game, and I'm never gonna, but I was yeah. wanting to try yeah. and get back to the head, headspace of it. The amount of fucking RPGs from the late 80s and early 90s that had Mac-10s in them? Yes. Ridiculous. <laughs> the Ingram Mac-10s. It's totally true. <laughs> yes. So you pick, one of the characters picks one up and they're like, what? I can't remember. What, there must have been some like commando or something like that where he used one, you know? I think that's right. I think it was commando or one of the Schwarzenegger Stallone era <laughs> films of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yes, like even I remember playing a cyberpunk with the Decipher. I think Decipher did cyberpunk. Or not, or maybe they just were like big fans of it. Mm. The Decipher Game Company, um, and those guys like loved um, going to any kind of like real world weapon at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, something's wrong with you. Um, I love Steve, you guys. You're just great. What, but what was wrong Steve, here? Was Steve Long in that group? Because the reason he, I asked, yes, well, yes. Yeah. Yes, because yeah. Steve Long was one of the designers on it, right? Yeah. But the reason I ask is Steve yeah. Long is also the guy who wrote Dark Champions, which is like 400 fucking pages of nothing but yeah. guns. <laughs> so. Yes, yes. So the, and the, so what I found out was, I think maybe just Steve, but maybe all of them yeah. um, were super into all the stats on various types of weaponry at the time. Yeah. So therefore, it made it into the game. That's and, awesome. And by the way, my boss... Um, who I really had a great relationship with at West End Games, but um, I would think it was only one who had that relationship with him. <laughs> Most people didn't get along with him, and they would say that that was true. Um, uh, he's unfortunately passed away, but he he was a super he was super into various kinds of guns. And every time I would like be like, all right, I'm gonna do this game, and we're gonna do it's gonna be Indiana Jones, and it's gonna be 
Jim in 1940s, but now he's fighting. Blah, blah, blah. You'd be like, okay, I have the, I know all the guns. But here you go. These are the guns you should put into the. I was like, but he was right. It was like it's so great. Yeah, like yeah. so. That's um, awesome. I, yeah. So I, I get, I get, I get, I get what they're yeah. why they like maybe have had a, uh, a, a kind of a, you know understanding of what those uh, wep- that weaponry was at the time. But like, yeah. I, I was like, <laughs> I have no idea. Let's just go ahead. Go ahead. Like it's a gun. It goes. It does a d6 of damage. Can we just move on, please? <laughs> so, stepping into the room, Hacken. Oh, Dave, I lost your camera as well. Uh, Hacken, uh, Serizador, Elena, standing in the center of the room on a. Oh, did I lose? Hold on, did we lose Dave from chat as well? I lost Dave from. There he is. Um, there he is. Can you hear me? I see yeah, him. yeah. We can see and hear you. There you go. Gotcha. Uh, so, Meshkahema, appearing as she does in this illustration is Mm -hmm. standing there and is watching the door an expression of just the slightest hint of bemusement and 11 children still chained to the side of the diadem and she's watching you as you come in and the last i recall of her she was not dressed this way it just seemed like to me more of like the way you would dress if you were performing in the This is exactly how she. I, I can't remember if you've seen her in a vision or not. Maybe this, I know. You know what? I don't think I did actually. Yeah. I think we just. I just knew who she was, but yeah. I, I hadn't hadn't seen her directly. Yes, you're no, right. No, only Sarah yeah, Gordon yeah. Hacken. And uh, yes, yeah. She looks at the two of you, uh, Sir Isidore and Hacken. Have you brought me a pet? I see your mind, sorceress. Tell them truly with what they toy. Release me, release me, and I will be merciful. Are there chains binding her? Nope, she's just standing on a diadem on a diadem, standing on a uh, dais, a diadem. She's on a fucking crown, guys. It's very thin. She's standing on a crown. I don't know it's why. Very small. Yeah. She's like, it's very. It's uh, that's why she's on tiptoes. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think I'm. I'm going to say that I kind of have a sense of what hack I'm just thinking, and I say she, she seems to me, and I, I'm doing it quietly, but not so. I'm not trying to hide it from what she might overhear. Um, she seems to be beholden to someone, but without physical chains, with metaphysical ones. And Elena, because of your magical her, yes. senses, there is like a mm. low level of panic that is rumbling in your stomach right now. Mm. She is. He is afraid of what may happen to her. If we were to free her, she would not necessarily be our a- ally, but she would not fight against our enemy. She closes her eyes and kind of looks up and then looks down at you, Elena, and where her eyes were human a moment ago, mm-hmm. they are slitted as a serpent's now. Mm, yeah. and. I would ask that you kindly give us, hold on, let's take a look at the horror check. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, yeah. no, a will, yeah, a will save, I'm guessing. No, I think it's a terror from beyond, or maybe, what the, what's it called? Terror of the Unknown. God, I love this game. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Here we go, here we go. That's <laughs> true. And it's, this, I, I just feel like there's, it. this, there's so many ways this game just fucking nails what in my mind is is yeah, Conan, I agree. you know? I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I said, and I, we talked about this, but I run a game of this for my brother. Yeah, right. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, we had the same situation where it felt like it felt like the game, the, the stories. It mm-hmm. really felt like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, would you give us a? 
excuse me, uh, DC mm -hmm. uh, 15 will save. Okay. Because this thing yes, yes. locks eyes with you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Nat 1, baby! <laughs> Would you like to fate point Wait, that? We're not playing yes, Savage Worlds. I was going to say, I, have, I was just checking. Uh, yes, yeah. I'm going to fate point that. that I is... trust that if the uh, game feels that you need another nat one, we'll get it. Okay, I got 17. All right. Good. Okay, so, you, right. um, so you've succeeded in it, which means... Um, mm, 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 mm. You just feel the wave of the unnatural. This thing appears human. This thing mm -hmm. is most definitely a creature of the outer dark. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. What do you so do? I, if I have a moment to say this, um, I say, she's not what she appears, but she can help us. In the, like, two, I'm thinking of a six yeah. second combat round, like, that's what I can She get, keeps her get eyes out. on you and turns to you, Sarisador, and says, uh, in, I think, a language only you understand. Olina, do you speak Acheronian? Um, and that is a great question. Second page of your character sheet, I think. Oh, no, bottom of the first page. No. Um, that, but, see, no, I don't. So, yeah. she says to you, Sir Isidore, there is so much you could learn. It is most definitely not a woman's voice you're hearing. You're not even certain it's human, Sir Isidore. But it is pregnant with a promise of power. Mm. So Alina is kind of saying it back, Sir Isidore has been spoken to in a blasphemous and long dead tongue. Hacken, what are you doing? Hacken stepping forward, sword trailing behind him, and he's whispering to himself, I am a son of Bori. I am a son of Bori. I am a son of Bori. So if you do, she will turn to look at you and uh, just give me two seconds to get something set up here. Where's that Hyborian Fang Dragon? I mean, uh... I should probably fight a Fang Dragon right now, quite willingly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Demon Sorceresses. Mm. Fuck. So with a blink, and let me just get the bar set up that I need. And let's see here. Ooh. All right. There is a flash hacking. And in place of that woman, you see this. Would Sir Isidore and Hacken kindly give us will saves? DC 15, please. You know the best thing about this illustration? It is so obviously female. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Ooh. Totally. Sir Isidore, do you want to fate point that? Hacken! Yes. Hold on, Hacken. Do you have a bonus against fear? Plus two to resist fear, including terror. So it still makes you three shy, Hacken. And Sir Isidore, you failed by four. You guys want to fate point that? Yes. Yeah. Um, <gasps> is this a terror save? This is a terror save, yeah. Uh, so here's the thing, with Crimson Mist, you, when you succeed against a terror save, then you can fly into... Yeah, so I need to succeed first. You need to succeed first, yeah, but then you can Crimson Mist this shit. That so, sounds like a good use of it. a yeah. last fate. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We go, come on, hack Come on, Dave, you can do it. Now one! <laughs> 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 oh no! Oh, no. Uh, of course. Would you give us a three d six roll, please? Oh man, that's gonna hurt. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Four, twelve rounds. You take minus two on attack rolls, saving throws, skill checks, and ability checks. 
you flee from the source of your fear as quickly as you can and um, once you are out of sight or hearing of the source of your fear you can act as you want however uh, oh yeah you can be forced to flee again I'm going to take it back. This game is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so for on hacking on your turn, let's uh, roll initiative, guys. And I'm going to put uh, Meshkahema in the... Oh, I should here, give her her proper name here. There we go. And... Oh, cheapers. I am not being favored for initiative rounds. No. Uh, Hacken, you can still roll initiative, though. Okay. See how quickly I run away? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Natch, oh. are you kidding? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. All right, so, um, Hakan, you were up, uh, I guess heroes go first. What do we see? What do we see where this thing, you've been saying that, and now you are suddenly face-to-face -face with an enemy older uh, than any standing stone in this city. <sighs> Yeah, I don't think he says anything. I think he just turns like, if if pale on a northerner, you know, was like how many shades from the people of Shem, uh, he turns that much paler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Blood just drains from his skin and he yeah. just turns and bolts. Ugh. He races for the door uh, and Hakan is just, just outside the door at this point. Then it is Meshkahema's turn. Um. Oh yeah. Okay. She will Oh, sorry, I thought there was a um, maneuver I was going to use here. Uh, I think she will try and intimidate you, Sir Isidore. So would you give us a... Let me make the intimidation check for her. Uh, that is a 23... And I think it is a will save for you. She's trying to demoralize you. Oh, uh, no, it's actually... 1d20 plus your level uh, plus your wisdom bonus. So 1d20 plus 5 plus, plus zero for zero. wisdom. So 1d20 plus 5, uh, she got a 23. Nice. Okay. So, I mean, you fail, but like there's a, there's a worse penalty if you fail by more. <laughs> so you are shaken. <laughs> uh, you're taking minus two to all your actions and abilities or whatnot for this round. Um, and she just says, uh, you can hear her voice as her final um, like move action. I could have promised you power. Sir Isidore, what are you doing? Well, <clears throat> Sir Isidore is... Uh... <laughs> Acting goes running out. Huh. Did not <laughs> expect that. <laughs> Did not expect that. Didn't see that coming. Um, he went out. He came in so softly and quietly and gracefully and left in such a rush. But um, given this, he's, he's going to bring out the... 
broadsword and do a two-hand attack and attempt to do a power attack to the hilt. Okay. Oh, uh, nice. I, yeah, I yeah. assume they're not armored. Um, she is not armored. Most definitely not. Okay. No. Okay. Excellent use of a maneuver. Let's see here. Uh, so she is uh, dodging. She's not great at this. All right. So this is just a... Do I have to um, pick how many points I do for this, or is this... Because that's uh, a power attack. Uh, yeah, power attack would be minus uh, four, right? I think to the hilt is... Is there a penalty to hit with that? Uh, it just says the power attack. So I think it just boils oh, down uh, to plus how many one damage with to the hilt. Oh, okay. So yeah, so um, but I can use up to four. I don't have to use all four. Precisely, that, yeah. Okay. okay. And you said right, uh, twice whatever you subtracted. Uh, okay. as damage all right i'll go with two that is enough now uh roll damage and if your damage dice is more than three it's stuck in there mm. three three, was a three not ah. more than so what does it say does it say more than or equal to to the health uh if your damage rolled on your dice is higher than your strength bonus, so it doesn't need to be higher. Okay. Okay, so you yeah, slash at her, but there's plus one damage on that. Plus your power attack damage. Plus your power attack damage, yeah. How much, you, how much of a penalty? Okay. Two. Two, so plus four damage, that's 11 points of damage then. Uh, and your, whoo, AP six with this. So that was, look at this. Uh, enter. There you go. <laughs> Look at that. So, yeah, you uh, tear into her. Yeah. There is a, like, boiling blackish liquid where blood should be. Ooh. Olina, what are you doing? Uh, well, I have a question. So this might be a, a, a role, actually, an action. Um, what I would like to do, if it makes sense, is to cast... Uh, a spell I used last time, which is the incantation of Amalric's, um, uh, what's it, uh, Amalric's Witchman, but it only works on, um, certain types of creatures. So I kind of want to know what she is. Is she, a, this so is definitely, I wonder if she's a demon or a god. Definitely, and if I have to make a roll for that, yep, this I, is I something you absolutely can target with that. Okay, great. Um, okay. okay, cool. So um, it's only um, so going to cost me two power points, which I have. Yeah. So um, and then make your magic attack. That becomes her saving throw. Yes. Correct. Okay. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Come on. Fourteen. Yeah. yeah. You satisfied with that? My music. Wanna... No, I do not. I'm not. No. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Come on, fate point. Come on, fate. Okay, but did you uh, roll? Hold on. It was your dice, though. Yeah, your dice roll was a six, which means that's a sixteen. So that's a twenty-two. Because if you if your dice is a uh, two to a ten, you get to add plus ten to the result on the free roll. Uh, yes, right, right, right. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay. I'll take the twenty-two. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So twenty-two. She's saving against. And are you fucking kidding me? Not one, baby. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh so this chef, Hacken, you are no longer feared. Yes. It just breaks you like a, a fever breaking on a sickened man. And allow me to do this quickly to show you. And by you. the way, I think Alina is totally shocked that what she did had any effect. Like she underestimated her herself. She thought that like, there's no way that she could actually do anything to this creature. So I think she's even like surprised about what's happening. <clears throat> and look at that. So what Whoa. has happened is she has become more vulnerable to injury. Whatever was bolstering her <clears throat> is gone as soon as you dispel her uh, weakness. And then, uh, Hacken. Come on, Hacken. <sighs> Runs back in. <laughs> I mean, you could charge this time too, right? 
Uh, then she gets an attack on me, but I can just run in and hit her once. Does she? With a charge? Yeah, that's I just read. The bull's charge to get the opportunity attack prior that's to my That's with the attack. bull's charge. That's a maneuver, though. There is actually like a charge charge, like a, a third oh, edition. Oh, okay. Yeah, like that Every is... Every time we say the word maneuver, which has come up several times, I, only, I can keep thinking of the Eddie Izzard bit where he says maneuver. <laughs> Which, Kevin, you can do better than me with the, the German accent about like. Oh God! Um, <laughs> I thought you were trying to do a New York accent and like George. No, think one see, of us can do go. a better right. New York accent than the other. No, I, I can't do any accents. <laughs> see, this is how bad it is. But a German accent of that of what I tried to do just now. Um, <laughs> but the, I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that like little bit that he does, but it's about um, the Heimlich maneuver. Um, and uh, yeah, it, so, but imagine if it was it sounded correct as a German <laughs> accent, unlike what I can do, which is <laughs> so not, I complimented Kevin on this previously. So he knows <laughs> I've now he knows I'm not joking. I'm very always <laughs> impressed that you can do those accents. Oh, well, thank you. Um, the, or my effort at them plus two to hit minus two to your defense. That's what you get from a charge. Okay, then I'll do that. So plus two to hit with a minus five on the power attack. And that's at a minus three. Okay, so minus three so, net, that's correct. Yeah, so I rush in with a full power attack. Yep. Swing for the fences. Oh, not even close. Come on, 12. Wow. Uh, it's the actually, it's very close. You're not the missing any still. modifiers, right? Uh, oh, you know what you're missing? Gang up. Serizadori yeah, is engaged as well. That is plus one. Ugh! Go and ahead and roll damage. The bingo card. <laughs> Gang up bonus awesome. is on the bingo card. <laughs> uh, all right, Akpatanian Greatsword. And then we're going to add 10 points of damage to this. Okay. Whoa, 30 points of damage. Oh my God. Look at this. Amazing. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, wow. That, it is Meshkahema's turn, and Hacken's oh, no. defenses are one lower. So she hisses and lashes out with those claws. She's not carrying a little stabby, stabby thing, although that thing looks amazing, too. Uh, oh, yeah, and she's awful. So she lurches forward. Let's see your hacking. Nat 20. That, that'll probably hit. <laughs> that'll probably hit. <laughs> probably. Okay. That's okay. I did my part. I did my part. You did. You definitely did. That was pretty amazing. You have no I armor even... on right now, right? No. I, Hacken's like, oh, no. this is like, a, you know, Starship Troopers. I'm hack yeah. on. I did my part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you're that not wrong. is, hold on here. Uh, oh, uh, 24 points of damage. So you are at minus four right now. You don't die until minus 10. So there is that. That's okay. That's okay. So she yes, responds in kind, tearing into the son of Bori. Sir Isidore, what are you doing? Oh, you're muted as well. So, Demo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was saying on mute, what an extreme battle for hacking here. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Runs off, runs oh, back. You know, brutal. Just, yeah, uh, I mean, ones, twenties, twenties, ones, <laughs> yeah. just back and forth. Um, okay, yeah, well, broadsword's coming out again. Uh, I will try to go to the hilt one more time. Go ahead. And oh. so, have a net of plus. Well, we have a plus one in, in for the gang up, uh, in addition to whatever else is going on. Okay, I'll do. I'm gonna do all four here. Nice. Nice. So it'll only be minus three to your attack roll then. Of three. Okay. Because of the gang up. That is a hit. So you're adding plus eight damage. All right. And that is enough to be, what does it look like? As you plant your sword into her. Oh my God. I think the broadsword is going right through the torso of the Meshkahema. Ah! Uh, yes. She ah, chokes and she looks at you and in a woman's voice once again, uh, you hear uh, Sir Isidore in Acaronian once again. 
I could have made you a god. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the she drops to the ground, fucking dead. Yes. 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 With amazing hack on on the ground, bleeding. With Sir Isidore letting his sword fall to the ground where she dies, and with Olena. Tutamon comes. We'll have to see what happens in chapter six. Yes. <laughs> wow. Exciting. So then uh, for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for part five of our two part adventure. Um, <laughs> and we're playing using Tony. <laughs> two part. The role playing yeah. game. Uh, as is always, because we'll, we will announce when we're going to be playing part six once we find a, uh, a mutual uh, a time in the schedule that everyone can play. Uh, as is always the case, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the campaign, or the adventure, quasi, you know, <laughs> short campaign, uh, the game, uh, or the uh, uh, session, uh, please do not hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section of the video, and I'll endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. There's also a link in the description of this video to the Dungeon Musings Discord server, where all of us are active, and we have channels there dedicated to uh, D&D 3rd uh, edition games where we haven't talking about this one as well as sort of games where we talk about conan um there's channels dedicated to most of the games we run on the channel as well as a bunch of great things like find a group or uh gm discussion i know someone's been looking for a second edition group uh recently as well so if you're looking for a second edition group to join you can head on over and find folks who are looking to play that um there is also, I mean, there's a great community that's built up over the years uh, over there, and you are more than welcome to join us. Uh, there is also a link down below to our friends at Noble Knight Games. Noble Knight Games is the preeminent unionized retailer of hard-to-find and out-of-print RPGs in North America, including Mongoose Publishing's Conan. I got, I filled my, my uh, collection uh, w with their help. Um, not only do they have an amazing selection of new role-playing games, card games, and uh, board games, uh, they also have an unmatched selection of hard-to-find and out-of-print RPGs. If they have something listed in their collection that is not in stock right or the catalog, not collection, because they're fucking selling it, they're not keeping it. They're not like me, where I'm just hoarding shit that will eventually fall over on me and kill me. Um, <laughs> the uh, they uh, if they don't have it in stock, they, you can set they put it on a want list. They'll send you an email when it comes in, and you can pick it up at your leisure. If you make a purchase of ten dollars or more through their website, be sure to enter the code MUSERNIGHT. Uh, and you all caps, all one word, it's listed in the description down below, and you will save yourself 10% on your purchase. There's also a link in the description of the video to something called Heroes Save Villages. It's the charity fundraising campaign we run on the channel that benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity. It's an incredible organization active in over 130 countries, benefiting over 80,000 orphaned and abandoned children. Our current uh, uh, first half of the year, we've been running charity sessions that have been selected by the donors from last year. But right now, voting is going on for for our next charity session uh, in two weeks time uh, we'll be playing two sessions of uh, Star Wars uh, Star Wars RPGs and uh, donors who have donated $25 or more since January 1st uh, 2024 are invited to go over to the charity initiatives channel on the Dungeon Musings Discord server and cast your vote right now we're voting on what villains our heroes will face and then finally uh, next uh, starting on uh, Sunday so later tomorrow at the time of recording, we'll start voting on uh, what game we're going to use. That will include the wonderful uh, West End Games uh, RPG that uh, George worked on. Uh, we're at Saga Edition. Um, I, and then we're gonna have some fan-made ones like the Savage Worlds one. I'll probably put my 2D20 one up uh, for vote as well. And then we'll offer a Kluge one as well. So there's gonna be some great options. Uh, the winner of the voting is going to be one session in the afternoon. The runner-up will be the one in the morning. Uh, so we have two seven hours of Star Wars that the donors will be helping to shape. After that, uh, around the second half of the year, we're going to be opening up, uh, if you've donated since the beginning of the year, $25 or more, you will be able to vote on the rest of our charity sessions. And I have some fun and inventive ways to 
uh, have uh, the donors help us put together those sessions. So uh, that will be our way of saying thank you. No, these will actually will be fun. I, I've got I got a neat idea. I'll tell you when we get off. Inventive B2B is murderous. <laughs> but okay, yes, no. inventive. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so then otherwise, we will be back in the Hyperion world to see our heroes make their final stand. They have slain the Princess of Shem. But what will they do with a Stygian sorcerer? We will be back at some point till then. But until then, oh, the last thing I got to say is an enormous thank you to our stalwart heroes. We've been waiting for about six weeks to get to this session because that was the first time we could all get together. So Dave, Jamie, and George, thank you so much for playing tonight, guys. I love running this game. And uh, you guys are such great Hyborian heroes. So thank you very, very much for playing. Dave, I'm sorry I tore your guts out uh, today. <laughs> so. well, you would have expected it, so it's all good <laughs> on the same page. Yeah. Do, do me his, his last sputtering words are, but there was no snow. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> yeah. good point. Yeah. Um, but we will be back in the Hyborian world. But until then, we hope that we gave you a few hours to take your mind off the troubles of our world and think about the troubles that our, our Hyborian heroes are facing in the depths of Tutamon's ziggurat. And until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy gaming. See ya.